two uninhabited Pacific islands. More than 5,000 miles from the UK. One will be inhabited by 14 British men, while a separate island will be home to 14 British women. When pushed to the limits of human endurance, will it be brute power or mental strength that wins the day? Who will have what it takes to stay alive? Tonight, we follow the men. Britain today, we've never been further from our hunter-gatherer origins. Doors are opening. But I want to know, when stripped of everything, has modern man still got that instinct to survive? <laughs> to find out, I'm marooning 14 ordinary men on a desert island. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. This could be the worst decision we've ever made. This time, it'll be harder than ever. They'll have to endure six weeks ah. in the height of the harsh tropical storm season. Bring it on, Mother Nature, I say. If this is the worst you can do... They will be utterly alone, filming everything themselves. We have two choices. One, we go down the 40-foot ravine. Holy shit! Well, we keep going through this arsehole of a jungle. They'll have to find their own water and hunt for their own food. We've just caught a prehistoric animal. You lazy bunch of bone idle bastards! Have these modern-day men got what it takes to survive? That's the hardest thing I've done. I personally don't think men are as strong now as they were, I wouldn't even say 50 years ago, even five years ago, because we have it too easy. The interesting question to ask, actually, is if we lost everything, what would happen to us? Yeah, it'd be nice to think I've come off the island feeling a little bit more macho, a little bit more alpha male, a little bit more popular with the ladies. I'm about to abandon these men on a remote Pacific island to see if they can survive. They will be utterly alone. My eldest lad's 19 is at university. He only needs me for money and a lift. And the youngest one's too cool to hang around with Dad. My dream is for them guys to go, that's my dad, that. That's fantastic. My dad did that. I don't think I've done anything that's put myself at risk, really. But I'm scared when you're sticking a graphic designer on an island with no other skills whatsoever. Anything could happen. These 14 ordinary men do not know each other, and they have no experience of living in the wild. At the moment, I don't enjoy day-to-day -day life. I've got a stressful job, I've got a newborn baby at home. I want to go on the island to get away from the day-to-day -day bullshit. I think everyone in life does take certain things for granted. Electricity when you turn on the light, having a warm shower, having breakfast. When it's not there and you wake up in the morning and go, where's the next meal coming from? It's a man test, isn't it? <laughs> OK, guys, we're getting closer. You are very remote here. The next stop that way is New Zealand. What I want to find out is, has all of this cushioning that civilization has experienced over the last 50 years made us totally lose touch with that survival instinct that I believe is deep within us all? OK, guys, I need you to be my eyes for any rocks. There are loads of rocks here. It takes an extreme situation to find out what people are really made of. What you're about to embark on, it will be the toughest thing you will ever do. You can do this, all right? You can do it. The men's home for the next six weeks is an uninhabited island in a remote Pacific archipelago. The 11 kilometers of coastline is dominated by treacherous cliffs and rocky headlands. Vicious swells and powerful ocean currents means there's no easy way onto the island. I'm going to try and get you guys as close as I can, all right? But you will end up swimming. If any of you guys are weak swimmers, 
it is a good time to say. I've never swum this distance before, not even in a swimming pool, but I will get there. I will get there. Age won't stop me doing this. It's not often in one's life someone actually challenges your morals, challenges you physically, and this does. That's why I want to do it. Who can't swim confidently? Confident with unconfident, yeah? Let's go. The men must make the 75-metre swim to the island fully clothed. Help each other, help those who are weaker. Get back, get let's go, let's go. Strong undercurrents mean the men need to get to shore as quickly as possible. Get in! The damnest thing I ever did. <laughs> Glad you were there. Oh, I couldn't have gone much further. But that's only a taste of what we got to come then. Bring it on, Mother Nature. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Well, the, the advice is to save your own piss, uh, which is a bit unnerving. With only two days survival training, initiative will be key. Essentially, it's water, isn't it? Is that your piss? That's my piss, mate. You've got to save everything out there. Yeah, yeah, save... I've been told, anyway. Save your piss. <laughs> Drink your own piss? <laughs> I hope not. So, they look a bit like a party of drowned rats at the moment. Kind of let the chaos begin. Uh, but what I do know is when I return in six weeks' time, the 14 men, if there's still 14 men there, which, to be honest, I doubt, the men that do remain will be changed. It's time for me and the crew to leave. We won't be back until the end of the experiment. For the next six weeks, the men will have to live entirely on their own wits. To make sure these men at least have a fighting chance of survival, I've ensured the island's got enough water, indigenous animals and vegetation on it to keep them alive. It's teeming with wildlife. But what they've got to have is the ingenuity to find it, catch it, and kill it. What's your name, mate? Oh. Paul. I'm Ross. Paul. Hello, Ross. All right. From here on in, everything you see will be filmed by the men themselves. Why don't we get everybody together and then we're just all talking, we'll work out something that we're going to do and then we're, we're all going to be heading that way, I'm assuming, anyway, because it looks a little bit safer than this, because it'll be dark right, soon. Come on, lads, let's make use of some of this energy while we've got it. All of the men will film but four of the group are trained and experienced camera operators. I'm Ross. Sam. How you doing, buddy? Who'll be living under exactly the same conditions as everyone else. Oh, I'm like a fucking mule horse, aren't I? <laughs> uh, <laughs> the brains of a donkey. Obviously, because we are having to film everything ourselves, we've got to cart all of, like, the camera gear, batteries and everything with us. Yeah. Let's, do it. Let's get on with it. Fuck's sake, this is survival, not Good Morning Britain. As well as the camera equipment, they'll have a medical kit, two jerry cans containing a day's supply of water, basic fishing equipment and a handful of tools. Guys, how many knives do we have? Let's count them in. Three yeah? knives, three machetes. Fine. Three right. knives, that's okay. easy. Hey, so I'll gather round in one group, guys. I'm Barney and I'm a paramedic from, uh, from Leicester. Oh, yeah. Andy. Yeah. I'm Andy Bennett, builder from Milton Keynes. We've got a fucking builder, everybody! Yeah. Yeah. So if he's not a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Piers, I am a doctor. Hey! I'm Kyle and I'm a website consultant. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Paul. I'm uh, I invented the dice. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm a construction contract manager. It's 4 p.m. With only two hours of daylight remaining, the men's priority has to be finding a safe place to shelter for the night. If they can't, they'll have to sleep rough on the jungle floor, alongside potentially deadly scorpions, snakes and caiman crocodiles. We're assuming that the north, north side, side of the one island one. would be nice, beachy, sandy, okay. flat seas. Paul thinks the group's best option is a beach. Let's go. And he's convinced they have time to cross the island to find one before dark. Who else was imagining sunny beaches when they thought about coming out here? These trees here are very sharp. Oh! There you go. 
I believe it will now be referred to as the porcupine tree. Vicious. The interior of the island is three square kilometres of mangrove swamp and unbroken jungle. And I know from experience that moving through dense island undergrowth is slow, exhausting work. It would do all you can to stop you in your tracks. And often the harder you push, the harder it pushes back. Well, stop! There's a snake down here. It's a boa, yes. isn't it? Take its head off if it's a decent size, mate. Get stuck in. Is anyone going to help me? I'm trying to carry a bag and a machete and kill a snake. He's looking pretty aggressive. He's coiling, isn't he? I need a long stick just to put on its head. Mind your... No, don't, 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 don't do that, for fuck's sake. Listen, should we just throw this case on it? No. Part of me thinks, should we just leave it? Didn't even flinch, did it? Yeah, yeah, let's keep going. And if we don't get out of this shrub, we're going to be sleeping here tonight. It ain't safe and it's not cool. With just an hour to go until nightfall, the men have covered barely 400 metres. Paul! Yes? You want to come and get a drink? The darker it's getting, the more it's getting a little bit worrying. I'll tap on it when you're done. Yeah. Somehow I've fallen into chief navigator mode, but I'm on it. My days are very stressful. It really doesn't fucking matter. I don't give a fuck. A lot of the time I think that most people are fucking idiots. Just get that load out, get that load out. You can't build the internal walls anyway. Being called a bastard is just a friendly greeting in the building industry. Get in there and get it done. This experience might change me, hopefully for the better. It might make me be a little bit more tolerant of other people. Come on, fuckers. This is going to take us fucking hours. Yeah. It's about to get darker and darker as yeah, well. Yeah, I know, so that's why we've just got to just get through it. We need to start to think, do we want to be hacking through this stuff when it's pitch black? Or at the next time we see a clearing, are we going to think about settling down for the night? Oh, I personally want to just plough on and make it. I mean, it's going to get darker in here quicker than it is on the beach. I say we plough on. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. <laughs> I don't know what to say right now. Door three doors are opening. I never had the money to go travelling. I've never done anything that's been a bit sort of edgy, that's been a bit dangerous, I guess. I don't think I'm as confident as I say I am, and I think a lot of what I do can be a front. The sort of persona of, of alpha male to me is, every, is everything my stepdad was. I saw enough of him growing up to realise who not to be. I guess it's time to find out who I really am. Keep coming, we're only 100 metres away! <laughs> I keep saying it's like the beach is 100 metres away. So sort of getting a little bit pissed off because we've been walking for about fucking miles and it's not here. The temperatures are free. At the back, 51 year old builder Andy is struggling to keep up. At the moment, it's like every man for himself. For fuck's sake. First, cut. We've not even made any ground. And we are all fucked. He Joe, gets more oxygen. Offer Andy and help, yeah. He's, he's carrying a really awkward. Training. He's carrying a really awkward box on he's his own. I know it's a ball ache, kid, but you're carrying one of the fucking easiest things in the world as heavy as it is. I know it's heavy. I'm a fuck, pal. No, I'm not. But it's the easy. You want to carry this bag? It's fucked. I'll swap oh, you now, mate. If you want. At the front, Paul pushes on despite the group's growing descent. We got lights in those cameras, Sam. Bit of infrared. How you doing, mate? Some people ain't playing ball. In what way? What do you mean? Oh, cracking on with fuck all, you know? We could all do that, like a hero with a machete. Come on, for fuck's sake. I know we all want to get on, but you've got to think of everybody else now. We're a team. You can't just be selfish, you know? Oh, there's a bit of light, look. <laughs> this is amazing. I found the sea. Ah. 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 Ah.
Let's see how this thing goes down. Fuck! I never thought I'd be so happy to see the beach in my entire life. Well done, mate. Well done. Nice one, mate. Oh. Never doubted myself. Never, never underestimate your own abilities. <laughs> <laughs> the sun's just beginning to set, so we're just in time, and everyone is on such a high right now. That's a whale. That's a whale. Wow. 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 We're still here watching the sunset, and there's whales swimming past us. Pretty cool. Don't get that often, do you? You right? About two minutes sleep, I think. I'm done. 16 hours ago, I dropped 14 ordinary British men on a remote desert island. I haven't slept for a minute. For a minute. They have spent their first night on the beach with no shelter. Is that really shit? <laughs> Oh, what have we done? <laughs> <laughs> you ever get that realisation you've done something you didn't quite think all the way through? At one point, I was shitting it, we're going to get washed away. I was like, ah, did he get that close? I mean, yeah, well, well, you can see the line, mate. You can see the line. The yeah, line's, yeah. what, three foot away from where we were? Mm. <laughs> Look at that of rubbish on this beach. Has anyone found a left shoe? Yeah, but these, I'm not too sure if I'm going to go for these. What? Oh, you! A bit last season. Hey, lads, look. Oh. Found it. Pink pair. Yeah. <laughs> these are bloody comfortable. <laughs> look at these bad boys. This is the male version. <laughs> <laughs> the men came onto the island with just a day's supply of drinking water. Mouthfuls. But after yesterday's arduous trek in 34 degree heat, it's all but gone. Tropical storm season, really, there shouldn't be any shortage of water on the island. And obviously, rain itself is drinkable without purification. But once it hits the ground, it becomes contaminated. All sorts of bacteria and nasties there. From experience, I can tell you, animals aren't fussy about where they crap. Oh, my God. Without a crap that's in there, that's fucking horrible. Without boiling, this rancid water would almost certainly give the men stomach cramps and diarrhoea. It's not salty, but... No, I'll tell you what, I've had hangover shits that smell better than that. Guys, can we... Like why do, what, why do we all together? kind of gather in and have some sort of conflap about what we're going to do today? Yeah, I think that might be a very good right. idea, Piers. Go on, guys, gather round. Right, plan of action, lads. Yeah. We 100% need to try and make a fire now. If we don't make a fire and something to boil new water, we are going to be in bad shape by tomorrow morning. Food is becoming a priority very quickly for a lot of people. We're going to have to get something substantial to eat fairly soon. Right, meet the journey. Shall we dance, sir? So, matey, let's go. The men decide to split up. Having eaten nothing since they arrived, the majority of the group head off to look for food while engineer Dan and builder Andy take on the fire lighting. It's quite a lot of pressure to get this fire going. You're down, Dan. I'm up. Yeah. To right. me, to me. Awesome. That is not an ideal start, is it? That did one stroke. Oh, lads. I shot my load. Round about here, there's about six, maybe 10 snails and shit, yeah? Along the coast, 47-year-old Vic has decided to put Joe, the group's youngest member, to work. We should definitely have put some fucking shoes on. That might have been a wise idea, fella. Oh, just anything. Limpets, crabs, give them a crack. Snails, you spot them, fella, and I'll club them. Do these snails bite? I feel sure some of my legs are going to come out of there, innit? And nip me. Don't put your finger where you want to put your dick, because it might get bit. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is how the nearest we get to Michelin star. Will we put it on a bed of anything? One. A morning's hard graft 
provides nothing more than a handful of limpets. Give it a good old cheer. Fucking hell. Yeah. Yeah, tough. <laughs> limpets are horrendous. You don't buy them in supermarkets, do you? So they're not known for being very nice. I don't think they're very nice at all. <laughs> For now, the men will have to go hungry. Stop. Who said there's no smoke without fire? Lying bastards. <laughs> Fire's pissed me off a little bit. I just don't know what we're doing wrong. Lighting a fire has become an urgent priority. It's 34 degrees in the shade, and the men have had little to drink in the past 12 hours. We've literally, we've got no water. None at all? No. I had a piss 20 minutes ago, and it was like pissing lion's golden syrup. <laughs> I had to push it out. <laughs> that is not viscous and clear. No, it's definitely not. The men are starting to show the telltale signs of serious dehydration. Thirsty. Really bloody thirsty. <laughs> Out, fuck all. The vultures are circling already. <laughs> <laughs> Can you look at the size of that? Jesus. That's prehistoric. How about your glasses? Do you reckon we could... Can I, can I try your glasses? Try it. Right, yeah. yeah. With their need for fire now critical, web consultant Kyle has an idea he wants to try. We've got Andy's glasses. Just basically using the sun to focus that in one point. It's given us quite a lot of heat. On. Don't think that's gonna work, the old glasses. Let go, let go. Oh, go on, Andy, lad! Sticks, fuck! Get the little sticks, preparation. Where's the next one? Where's the rest of the shit? Where's the rest of the stuff? Sticks! Fucking sticks! Get up there! 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 Get up there!
I've got a beautiful wife, lovely house, nice job, etc. All the stuff that most people strive to get. And yet, I'm still searching for something. Perhaps all men get like that, I don't know. Perhaps I'm at a midlife crisis. I don't like myself as much as I used to, put it that way. I think I need a new adventure to put that right. Oh. 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 An hour before sunset. The, uh, the heavens have opened, as expected. We've got a fire going. Yeah, but we've got a bush. Which is brilliant. However, it is now pissing down with rain. We've got no cover over it whatsoever. I know, we've I got it, nowhere yeah. to sleep whatsoever. So I would say our priority is shelter. Honestly, in the politest way possible, we need to cover up this fucking fire because it's going to go out. Without the fire, the men will have no means of purifying water to drink. Who is doing the leaves? Is anybody getting the leaves to cover this? That is going out in about half an hour. Ah, clusterfuck or foobar, I don't know what the correct military term is. So now we've got a million people trying to do a million things. Hopefully we'll have a million answers. So I was just fucking mad. Unbelievable. You don't ever see rain like this in the UK. Absolutely, completely oh stoking. 8 p.m. The men are still desperately trying to make a watertight shelter to save their fire. Over and under, that's it. See if we can bend it, Barn. In this part of the Pacific, storms can last for days and dump inches of rain in an hour. It's a great night, obviously, we're, we're staying dry under the shelter that we've made. It's a good job we made it, otherwise we'd be absolutely saturated right now. The roof might need possibly a, a tweak or two. There is a minor bit of snagging before practical completion. It's just something simple like perhaps taking the whole fucking thing down and redoing it. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone checked on Andy? Oh, good call. Andy! 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 We've got a headlight, guys. Andy chose to not help the group in any way, shape or form mm. and went off on his own. Andy's here. Vic, Andy's here under the tree. I think Andy needs to get a little bit more involved with us all, to be honest. <laughs> It absolutely pissed down last night. Everyone was awake and everyone was just so wet through. I was sat there and I was just thinking, what am I doing here? I feel kind of pissed. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. I feel like I've had a couple of pints. I can't move my legs. I've sat up, I just can't move. <laughs> the bed paralyzed you? Yeah. That's great. Completely numb <laughs> from cock down. 6 a.m. Last night, a violent tropical storm battered the island. After a desperate struggle, the group managed to save their fire with a small temporary shelter. But the men themselves had no protection from the elements. Video diary. I don't know what day it is. I don't know if it's day two, day three. Still no sleep after getting on the island. I think I've had about, honestly, swear to God, an hour of sleep. I can't do it. I've, I've got to think about myself now, you know? Yeah, yeah. I've been out all fucking night. I'm a mess because of it. Sleep really is critical to survival because it affects our physical and our mental health. Uh, when you get enough of it, it helps your body to recover, to heal. You process thoughts, process memories. But when you don't get enough of it, that's when you become careless. It affects your decision-making abilities and it can even lead to depression. Mm. What's up? No, I'm struggling a bit, I think. At the moment. With? The mentality of it all. Do you know what I mean? I think you've got to get yourself in, like, a... in the zone, as it were. And I'm struggling to find the zone at the moment. I'm really worried about Joe. He's just kind of wandering around, sitting down, hitting his hands. Kind of, I don't think he's feeling sorry for himself, really. 
and he's, he's obviously missing home. What's her name? Charlotte. <sighs> you miss her, mate, don't you? So we made it in two. <sighs> yeah. Best thing that happened to me, huh? How long have you been together? Five years. For the first time ever since I met her that I've gone 24 hours without speaking to her, so... Come on, dude, hug it out! <sighs> You'll be fine, mate. You'll be absolutely fine. I promise you. You'll be fine. Honestly. <laughs> If I don't have a good night's sleep fairly soon, I'm going to end up throttling someone inadvertently. I'm not, I'm not joking, I'll, I'll lose my rag. I want a bed to sleep in, I'm not going to get soaking wet. The group are relying on their two builders, Andy and Paul, to construct a new watertight shelter. But both have a very different idea about where to put it. We need to pick a location to build this shelter on. Correct. We have two potential locations. Uh, and is your place on the beach? Yeah. We can clear these little bits of thicket and brush easily. Yeah. Look, we've got a pit there for a fire pit. So this is absolutely perfect camp. Job's good. Is this 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 is not Andy's, is it? You're more exposed to the tides, you're more exposed to the weather, and we're gonna get bitten to smotherings by sandflies. It's not an option. No way. Andy's camp it looks like it'll flood it with tidal surge, there's plastic bottles everywhere, I think we'll get bitten to shit. Pointless, give me my opinion, mate. Fucking nobody listened to fucking me. I Can would love to have come down here for Andy's sake and gone, this is fucking brilliant, mate. Yeah. But the trouble is, we walked in here and it, I, did, I kept my mouth shut, but within 30 seconds, everyone went, are you fucking joking? I'm a builder. People get me in to fix anything. Customers phone me up to put their IKEA bedroom stuff together. It's like, well, fuck you then. With Andy's site rejected, Paul shows the men his preferred location. Because it's elevated, this is not really going to get that wet. It's got a fairly good canopy. We can all sleep here on the dry. Correct. You've got a nice little breeze coming through as well. Yeah, I like this place. Now, right, what do you want me to do, Paul? Well, what we need now, cross members. I'm bitched about Paul being a volcanic rhinoceros, but... You know what, he's single-minded, but he makes clear decisions and sticks by them. And he's been right more than he's been wrong so far. Ah! We're fucking saved! We'll be all right now. Knew there was power on the island. How are you finding it? A bit shocked at how, um, difficult. <laughs> how, how difficult it's been. We're all here doing the same shit. Yeah, We're yeah, all not yeah, sure yeah. whether we're shitting sea at Bush. Determined to boost Joe's morale and keep his mind off home, father of three Vic has asked him to join in with the shelter build. It's a challenge. A fucking challenge. You'll adapt to all this quicker than any of us will. Far quicker. It's a case of making sure everybody guides everybody else to, in the right direction. I, I, I do firmly believe we will become an excellent team uh, to the point of becoming almost like a tribe. Let me just say, building camp at the top of a steep hill in the middle of the rainy season is the stupidest idea ever had. A chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And I'm obviously the weakest link. Joe, you're not the weakest link, you're just missing home. It's, it's a natural thing to feel. Yeah. I think some people do think I'm the weakest link, mate. I don't think... Do you think, think that? I don't think No, that. but I think you do. Do you think so? Yeah. Crikey, what's made you think that? Day one, when I met you, you've been shouting orders at me from Have day I? dark. No. But we're carrying stuff in and out of a jungle, and I've got a really heavy rucksack on my back, and you're saying, Joe, I think it's a good idea if you do this. Joe, I think it's a good idea if you do that. Now, you've not been shouting okay. orders at anyone else, but I think you feel that I'm the youngest, therefore, naturally, you've got some authority over me. Ooh. And that's been grinding on me a little bit. Joe intimated that I'd been giving him a hard time, which I truly have only tried to be positive with everybody. I was devastated. Oh, You're being aggressive. You are. You're being passive aggressive, and that's not fair. All right? It's he just told me I'm being passive aggressive and we're having a laugh. Didn't. However bad your situation is, you can't wallow in negativity. You know, survival is about dogged determination, learning from your failures, and never giving up. 
And Churchill once said a great quote. He said, if you're going through hell, keep going. The balls are doing the backstroke in a bucket of sand. I'm hungry, I'm tired. And all that's going through my head is, I don't, I don't self-farm at home, so why the hell am I self-farming out here? 6 a.m. I've never been in an environment where last night you hear a thunderstorm and it's now daylight and it's still thundering and it's still raining. Overnight, torrential rain has once again battered the island. The men have managed to protect the fire, but their spirits are low. It is a bit mind-boggling that you can have this much rain. It's so long, it just keeps coming. Yesterday, the men started work on a new shelter. But only half built, it was no match for the elements. I'm massively underestimated this place, massively. I'm so skinny and have been for as long as I can remember. Last night, when I got my first hunger rumble, food's playing on my mind a lot more. It's hard. This is apocalyptic weather. And it's going to threaten to wash us out of this camp. For the third night in a row, the men have barely slept. The positive? It's daytime. I can see how crap it is. <laughs> Here in the tropics, when it rains... It's not just nice British drizzle. It's torrential. We can hardly hold a conversation. You've got to spend so much time and energy trying to keep your fire alight when you could be out there fishing or hunting or making shelters. However strong and determined, after a while, it saps you. You know, it saps your spirit in the same way it saps a life out of a fire. I cannot face another day on here. Honestly, I can't. I'm at the stage of almost a breakdown, to be totally honest. You just can't imagine how tough it is. Unbelievable. The island's youngest member, Joe, says he's had enough. Four weeks, I think, would be a push for me. Six weeks, I didn't think I'd ever make. The pain that I'm going to go through here, leaving the loved ones at home, Charlotte, all the rest of it. Then why did you sign up? I don't know. At 10am, the storm finally passes. Determined to leave as soon as possible, graphic designer Joe uses the emergency satellite radio to request an evacuation boat. I just really strongly believe that as a person, physically, mentally and all the rest of it, I'm not going to make the rest of the time on the island. And I've not made any rash decisions because I'm aware that you can make decisions in the heat of a moment. And I haven't. I just really fancy a margarita pizza. Joe wants to go home. I can't believe it. He's not been here four days. We've not even started. He wants to go home. Joe has agreed to stay on the island for another 24 hours before making a final decision about whether he wants to leave. You want it up there, mark it, and then we'll cook it. Is it long enough? Um, no. You can go halfway then. In the jungle, work continues on the shelter. Can you um, get that any higher? The group have persuaded Andy to help out, hoping the prospect of a dry night will encourage him to stay. Yeah, one there. Yeah. And then one down here. Oh, so not there, then? Eh? So not there, then? I didn't say to put it there. The whole reason I said I don't want to tie a sled knot in this piece because we need to get the piece of wood in there first. Paul is a project manager in a construction company and Andy is a builder, them two personalities just clash because one wants to tell the other one what to do and then this one wants to tell this one what to do. All we need to do is tie this on here, please. That's all we need to do. Yeah, but where's the bit of wood? Because I'm not tying a fucking knot if there ain't a bit of wood in it. Look, that ain't going nowhere. That's the shape I want. Andy really has a massive problem with me. Everybody's been tiptoeing around him for the past four days. Um, it's just been a fucking prick. But what can you do? Something's going to explode at some point. Since yesterday, Andy has been hinting that he too might request evacuation from the island. Why are you threatening to go home, Andy? All sorts of reasons, mate. 
Come on, spit this out. No, I don't need to. Why are you so aggressive? I'm asking you a civil no. question. Yeah, you've asked me it three times. The yeah, first time should have been enough, then the second time, now you're asking no, a fourth time. they were different time. questions. And then you're, then you're calling me aggressive because yeah. I don't want to answer a question that you've asked four times. I haven't asked it four times. You have. You said, I said, why do you want to go home? You went, because I do. I went, well, give us a reason. You went, I'm not going to give you a reason. Exactly. I said, so then you asked again, and then you asked again, and then you asked again. I didn't ask again, Andy. You did. What is the fucking matter with you? Nothing the matter with me, son. At all. Do we wedge that there and then prop it up? Whatever Andy wants to do. I've had enough. Hang on. They don't need your expertise. I said, stop asking me. And he carried on asking me. <laughs> Fucking unbelievable. With the camp's two builders walking off the job, construction of the shelter grinds to a halt. There's no doubt there's a lot of strong, pretty macho personalities on the men's island. And, yeah, they're all trying to find their place in that pecking order. Uh, but the danger when you get these high-pressure situations like this is that the alpha males start to compete instead of cooperate. And then the danger is it blows a whole group apart. I'm used to being in control, I'm used to being organised, everything running efficiently. It's what I do. That ignorant twat wants to do it his way, yeah. and he hasn't got a fucking clue. It makes your head... It's like it wants to implode. Seriously, my will is a punch to the throat. He's down, gone, finished. It's over with. I walk away. Happy days. I can't do that yet. Bang, done. Fat cunt. You know what I mean? There's a lot of bad blood in camp at the minute, largely between Paul and Andy. We've got enough on our plate in this island without alpha male dick swinging. I think uh, everyone just needs to man the fuck up, really. I feel like everything I do, mate, he's just there, ready to fucking knock, knock it down, you know, or criticise. It's like, fuck off, you know? And if he goes, I'll stay. He's my main problem. So, I overheard a conversation with Andy. His exact words were, if Paul leaves, that would be good, because then I will stay. I'm not dealing with that sort of immaturity. He's supposed to be a grown man. I'm not being blackmailed. I don't need to be surrounded by this immaturity. I might just have to go. Are you thinking about fucking off? Can't be fucking bothered. Mate, you can't go, mate. You literally can't go. Do you think that you would regret it later on? You will regret it. I think I won't. Just suck it up, mate. Lift up your skirt. Wash the sand out of your vagina, mate. In a disastrous turn of events, three men including the island's two builders, are now threatening to walk. Andy, Paul and Joe all want to leave this island. I'm amazed that they've come this far and want to give up so early. As yet another storm hits the island, the men call a crisis meeting. I know it sounds cutthroat, but we need to, to keep as many of those guys here as we can. But for any of them to change their mind is a win. There's been so much discussion about people leaving. My personal, personal opinion is that we are stronger together than we are apart. Agreed. Joe, I'm, my hope is that you might have thought We've differently We've already done overnight. this. I've already had the chat with everyone. People have already said their thoughts. I've already said my thoughts. But on that note, I will be saying no more. I'll just be waiting for the boat to arrive and to leave. OK? Paul, would you just let us know how you're feeling at the moment? I came to this island as a bit of a release, you know, to get away from my everyday life. Um, I'm not really confrontational. I don't like having arguments with people. I'd rather just step away from the situation. The final nail in the coffin was to hear somebody say that it was good that I was going, which I thought was a bit of a shame, but in another way, it confirmed my decision, and um, in that case, that's why I decided to go. If one goes, there's no point in the other going. Right, here we go. How we make that decision... Here we go. I this is no now idea. we're getting to the country. Yeah. He's segregated himself from the group from day one. We're having a discussion, he doesn't want to know. We haven't got any beds, he makes himself a bed. He goes off and socks. Somehow, that's my fault. I've had no sleep the full day. Neither has anybody. Oh, they've you not You've been sleeping. Sorry, mate, you've been sleeping. Andy, nobody's had any sleep. 
as a group, no one here has had enough sleep to, to give them the energy to do what they've had to do the next day. So you pointing the finger at me and saying, well, you've had sleep, fine. That's your problem. I've been having a laugh up until I heard one of my teammates say they wanted me to go. I was having a right crack. Now I'm not. In a community, not everyone gets on. And that is a fact of life, and we can't change that. So let's build our community. You and you, just keep, keep your distance. At least we're together. We're two men up. We can build a shelter in a day rather than taking two days with two men down. The big strong man and the builder. You two fuck off, then we're fucked, aren't we? See, I don't want to lose two builders, you regardless can. of your characters. <laughs> we, we, we need you to stay. I'm going to walk away, and then that would well, the hopefully... Big, Andy can, no, listen. So Andy can enjoy his experience and hopefully five. Then you're not losing two people, are you? You're losing one. I'm leaving the island. Whether Paul leaves or not. Whether Paul leaves or not. I would rather Paul stay. He's a stronger man than me. He'll be more benefit to him. But either way, I'm sorry, I'm going. For him to fucking say, I'm glad he's going, good, then I'll stay, then all of a sudden he hasn't got his own way again, and it's, oh, I'm going, there's other reasons. It's fucking immaturity. It's sulking and it's attention seeking. And you don't bollocks, want to escape going. Absolute I bollocks. I'm not having it. I am going off this island because I'm not being held responsible for that. End of story. Next time on the Women's Island. <laughs> what? A huge fucking snake came to me. Fucking hell. At the minute, we are barely coping with the situation in which we find ourselves. Barely. Oh, shit, no, wait, sit forward. We have nothing to drink. We don't know where we are. Hello! Pacific Islands. More than 5,000 miles from the UK. One will be inhabited by 14 British men, while a separate island will be home to 14 British women. When pushed to the limits of human endurance, will it be brute power or mental strength that wins the day? Who will have what it takes to stay alive? Tonight, we follow the women. In 21st century Britain, old-fashioned ideas about men and women have disappeared. And traditional gender roles have become blurred. Women are often expected to do it all, combining childcare with excelling at work. Don't let that happen again. I don't know who's doing it. It's really, really embarrassing and unprofessional. But if stripped of all of the advantages of modern life, a multitasking 21st century women better cut out for survival than men. To find out, I'm abandoning 14 ordinary women to fend for themselves on a remote desert island. They will be utterly alone. It's been with my family. Filming everything themselves. Right, you're filming me, filming you. That is the biggest shaka I've ever seen. They'll have to hunt for food. You're all right, you are. For water. Yeah, it's collecting water now. And for shelter. Oh, for <laughs> sake. The women will be taken to the very edge of existence. <laughs> Living on the island for six weeks in the middle of tropical storm season. It's like a tornado. That is terrifying. <laughs> we need a radio in medic now. It's not a program. It's ridiculous. Wow. Just remember to how you felt when you felt shit, OK? And leave it there. <laughs> when pitted against the extremes of nature, have these Monday women got what it takes to survive. Guys! 
That is a big their self-worth and things like money, what they're able to buy, what car they have, what clothes they have, makeup, how beautiful they are. When all of that's gone on the island, I think it all comes down to what sort of a person you are. I think you've got to be slightly mental to want to do this, right? I think you've got to be slightly off your tree. As human beings, it's the closest we're going to come to a reboot. I'm about to abandon 14 British women on a remote, uninhabited Pacific island. I want my daughter to know that her mum is actually quite brave and she's not just this person that's there to make tea. I want to show her that you can do anything. Really looking forward to going back to the hunter-gatherer, our animalistic roots and finding your own food. I think it's only by pushing yourself to these extremes that you get to find out who you truly are. These are ordinary women with no previous experience of surviving in the wild. I'm not going on because I can kill an animal and I know I can survive and I can chop down a tree. I'm doing this because I can't, but I'm eager to see if I can. It's the adventure. There's so much I haven't seen. There's so much I haven't done. I'm running out of time and I might be running out of health. How fast are we going right now? About 30 knots. We can go really fast. Oh, wow. I think people often think that to be good at adventure or survival, you've got to have big muscles. But actually, in the battle to stay alive, it's one in here and in here, not on these. Get me on the island, all of us gals. I think we will not only survive, but I think we'll thrive. This is your island, straight ahead. <laughs> There's no oh, beach! beach. Oh. There are a lot of currents around this, OK? So I'm going to try and find a little area of slack water to get you in. Unpredictable riptides and hidden rocks make these waters treacherous. This is the closest I can get the boat to the shoreline. I'm not going to sugarcoat this for you guys. It is going to be hard. It's going to be hard physically. It's going to be hard emotionally. And the thing to remember is positivity. Positivity, positivity. It's not the white beaches and the sun that we were actually, daydreaming of. I was OK until I got to this point, and now I'm really panicking. Hey, how deep is that? You know, it is going to be out of your depth. There are rocks in there. Just be smart. To get to the island, the women have no choice but to swim to the shore in the clothes they're wearing. It's the thoughts of being all night, with no dry clothes and no fire, cos we have to make mistakes. <laughs> don't think about it, don't think about it. Just, just one by one. <laughs> it's going to take We'll just hours. cuddle each other tonight. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's allowed the old wind. Once we get you in the water, you'll be done with it. Yeah. Yeah? Can't then, it's all, then it's all in front of you. It's all uphill okay? from here. <laughs> you'll be great, you'll be great. It's all uphill from here. Yeah. <laughs> You're good to go. <laughs> Let's go for it. The women take with them bags and cases containing their filming equipment and medical supplies. This is crop territory. Let's get you out of the water as fast as we can. Oh. Okay, let's go. <laughs> From this moment on, they'll be completely alone. Who are you? George. George. Excellent. I'm Becky. Becky. Hi, Becky. Happy. <laughs> so nice to meet you. I'm Harbler. Nice to meet you. <gasps> what did you do? I'm a psychotherapist. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Belinda. Oh, I'm Jamie. Belinda. 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 What's your name? Oh, Becky. Hello. Belinda. Oh, so emotional. Well, that was suitably chaotic. You know, it's four o'clock, it's going to get dark here in a couple of hours, and already, you know, there have been 15 minutes chat, chat, chat on the beach. They need to work hard, get moving. But, you know, it's nothing I can do. These are things they're going to find out. It's time for me and the crew to leave. We won't be back till the end of the experiment. Oh, I am pissed.
peeing. I'm peeing, I'm peeing, I'm peeing. Oh, I still need to pee. I don't know if I want to pee through my trousers. I've already done it. Do you want to the women's home for the next six weeks is this remote, uninhabited Pacific island. To make sure they have a fighting chance of survival, I've ensured there is enough water, indigenous animals and vegetation to keep them alive. But only if they have the ingenuity to find it, catch it and kill it. I've dropped the group in the most inhospitable part of the island. There's unforgiving jungle and deadly creatures all around. Now, just two hours before sunset, the group need to move away as quickly as they can. Are you still weeing, Jade? I'm weeing. I need to find that peaceful moment where I can actually wee. But I am, but the thing is, I'm weeing. And then I push more and wee more. I think it's because I've held it in for so long. Guys, it's really dense up here, so we need to get moving. We're just going to try and take all the kit up this slope, basically. Bring it up, because I think the tide's coming in. And then try and find somewhere to fucking sleep. Can you take this camera, of course? All of the women will be filming, but four of the group are trained and experienced camera operators. Not again. They'll be living under exactly the same conditions as everyone else. Please, could you just push me at my back? No, it's my weight. I can't get it up. Here, wait. Oh, my hand. That's it. That's what I needed. The women have no food and just one day's supply of drinking water. <laughs> we need a decent place to sleep tonight because it's nearly dark. We're not going to have so it here. We need no, to, we we need to need move. To go. We really do. Right, who wants to carve the way? To stand any chance of surviving, they've been provided with three knives, three machetes and some basic fishing equipment. Anybody that's using a knife, just tell us. Don't whip it out. <laughs> Are we going right or straight? Guys, yeah, yeah. should we get together and have a chat? Because well, let's ask yeah. Should we come, let's yeah. come up? There's a clearing. With little daylight left, the group's priority must be to find a safe place to camp and quickly. We can't just come off a boat and stay in the same place. 100%. 100%. Do you want to lead the way? Make a decision. You lead the way. Anywhere you think it looks the clearest, we'll follow you. I'm not going that way, right? It's more dense and the light is through over here, so I want to go over here. Guys, be really careful when you come in on this trail. I'm still going up. Keep going. Keep going. Need to get the fuck out. <coughs> what? <coughs> oh. Right, stay still. Oh. We've got dinner. Oh my God. What is it? Snake. Oh. 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 It's right near me. A huge fucking snake came it's towards fine. me. I think what you need to do... Fucking hell. Right, it's going up the tree, girls. Shall I just chop its head off? <gasps> it came right at me! What? What is head? And it came straight towards me! And he always stood on her! That's why I ran away! Oh, fuck! I'm, really I'm gonna well. fucking die on the You're right, you're, you're not gonna die. Fine. You are not going to die. It came right towards me like that! Just breathe slowly and walk up to me How now. I'm gonna sleep in this island. Come on! What's her name? Jamie. Jamie, oh. come to me. Oh my god! Just I come can't to even... me. Right, I'll come to you. Oh. Oh. To be honest, I'm frightened of everything: bogs and snakes and crocodiles and sharks. But I really, really want to overcome the fear. Materialistic things really shouldn't matter, but unfortunately they do matter a lot to me. I can't imagine what it's going to be like going back to complete and utter basics. It might change me into a new woman completely. I have no idea. Oh, I was on the island for two minutes and a snake attacked me. Fuck me. I don't want take, a snake coming take towards a me. a deep yeah. breath, please. OK, just OK. Just in. Just stand still <sighs> and breathe in. Right, and breathe out. It's not going to get you. It looks like it's bloody coming. It's bloody not. Stop right, okay. fucking looking for it. So, basically, um, the whole place is crawling with snakes. Yeah. Go on, move on. Keep moving. I want to get out of here. <laughs> when you're pushing through dense jungle into the unknown, everything is a potential threat. You've got caiman crocodiles, you've got snakes, you've got wild pigs, all of which are most likely to attack when they're surprised. You let your guard down, the wild is gonna bite you on the backside hard. 
I feel like everything's crawling. Away. It's not. You've got to try and just take your mind away and just pretend you're walking through some lovely area of a botanical garden. <sighs> oh shit! They're yucca. Oh where? Right, right here. here. Look. Oh. Oh, yeah. <gasps> we got a yucca. Guys, we need to get our priorities straight. It's an early win. They've identified a valuable source of carbohydrate. We're getting too excited about your car. <laughs> I'm actually quite concerned about sleeping, not your car. This is nuts. I didn't know places like this existed. Oh, my hair. It's caught on a bike. Okay, more spikes. Oh. Guys, there's spikes on this that you can't even see. We're getting denser. Is everybody happy to continue oh. through this? Well, um... I think we need to think about how much sunlight we have left. If I have to, I'll walk through the dark because I am not sleeping here because of that snake. I, I'm with you on that one. I don't know what else is here. With light running out fast, the women are no closer to finding a beach to set up camp. Guys, where we just stopped, where there is quite a big open space, this might be a good place to just base. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Right. I really, really do feel like I want to get out of this area because I feel like we've made absolutely zero progress. Let's get out of here. It's really um, making me quite anxious and stressing me out. 14 British women have been abandoned on a remote Pacific island with nothing but the closest stand up in and a few basic tools. Sorry, what I want to find out is has all of this cushioning that civilization has experienced, has it made us totally lose touch with that survival instinct that I believe is deep within us all? With night closing in, the women have decided to abandon their search for a beach and set up camp in the jungle, taking their chances with the deadly critters. Strength isn't an outward thing, it's an inner thing, it's an inner quality, and whether you're a man or a woman, you can have that. It's about how you react to the hardship. Yeah. Rain. rain, rain, go away, come again, when we get off the island. just got changed and now it's raining, oh, yeah. so I've, got, I've only got my normal yeah, I, pants. I, I, if the women are to survive, they'll need to live through six weeks of the tropical storm season. At its worst, the torrential rain can dump up to an inch of water in an hour. My current knickers and trousers are wet through, so I feel like I've sh wet myself a bit. I'm wearing a shitty nappy. I have dry socks, though, which are in my bra, keeping <laughs> even drier. Yeah, that's a good idea. Without shelter, the only protection the women have from the elements is their raincoats and ponchos. It's absolutely hideous. It's going to get dark soon. Yeah. And that will mean that there's no heat at all. So we will go to bed cold and damp. And we'll have to sleep on a cold and damp jungle floor. Look at my fucking hand. I have a hairdresser. And, like, I can't afford this. Do you want to see the water coming out of my socks on film? Don't worry. <laughs> 7 p.m. and the women are determined to get a fire started. If you can find another tree with some of that, great, but that'll burn very, very quickly. It's cold and it's horrible. I'm trying to actually not even think about it. That's what I'm trying to do at the moment, just focus on what's going on and not focus about the dark. Because if we don't get a fire and we sit down, awful. After just two days survival training, Becky, Georgina and their team have made a bow and drill. And we move this really sl <laughs> slow and low, Becky. I well, like it long and I like it slow. <laughs> <laughs> Spinning one piece of wood against another should create enough friction to produce a burning ember. Oh, honestly, who'd be a bloody caveman? Yeah. <laughs> We've done it once, we'll do it again. We can do this, girls. We can do it. We can do it. Right, right back in. We're all so desperate to make fire, and the conditions are just so wet. I just have a feeling we're going to stay up all night and try and make fire. Is there any smoke coming from here at all? 
How long do you think the girls have been at it now? Three hours, maybe more, maybe more than three hours. These women I'm with are amazing. I've gone from absolutely terrified to sheer <laughs> thrill and enjoyment. Oh, there's some tons of smoke. It's like a friggin' wigwam. Keep going. I don't think I can hold it much longer. Ah. Bloody good amber. Are we going for it? Maybe it's going too far on that. Very nearly there. There we go! Oh my god! Wow! Do it again! Just for me! Oh my god! 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 These women have achieved what took mankind hundreds of thousands of years. Guys, how are we actually feeling about the fire? <laughs> Almost more importantly, what it does for the women is going to give them a sense that they're gaining control of their environment. Is everyone stripping off? Oh. <laughs> I've got my dress stuck in my knickers. <laughs> oh, I don't want to sound too cocky too early. No, I don't think we should. I don't think we should at all, no. but right now, this we, is... We're winning. Oh! Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> fucking fuck me! What the fuck is that? What no, is please it? tell me that's not what a spider. It? <laughs> it's that big crab over there. Can you see it, Jules? <laughs> oh, my God, there's no <laughs> way I can sleep here. Can <laughs> fucking hell! We're not staying here tomorrow. We're all going together and we're going that way. And we're not going to stop until we find a framing bee. Oh, no. Ladies got crabs. <laughs> the women have had a restless first night on the damp jungle floor. I tried to have some sleep, but the noises in the night and the crabs that were creeping up on us, I just couldn't... I, I just sat up all the time with the torch, the head torch, like that. I did. I woke everybody up with my farts. You did about five or six big, loud ones. Yeah, well, no, 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 they weren't loud. <laughs> oh, no. You just decided to sleep where I party. This is that, uh, yucca. Uh, and it's a bit like a potato. Despite lack of sleep, Julie's playing mum and has rustled up a little breakfast. We're very excited. We've got our first food. Oh, hang on. Oh, my way. Not as nice as normal food. <laughs> when we're actually starving, it'll be absolutely amazing. The group may have found food. Add to the collection. Uh, what is that? <laughs> oh, it's swollen. Ah. Really but during painful. the night, it's the women themselves that are featured on the island menu. Look at my bear. You've got like a full face of spots. I can't even like wipe my eyes. Use my hands and dirty. Look at my nails. Basically, I cannot be dealing with this. One side of me is like. I, I want to do this, I love nature, I am one with nature. And the other side of me is just like, look at my fucking face. <laughs> you get me? You know, what the fuck? Like, you always look gorgeous yeah. when you're young. Exactly. You do. <laughs> Don't be. Exactly. No. You know, and do you know what? Yeah. Your boobs are better than mine. <laughs> well, mine are false. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the urgent priority for the group is to find a safe place to camp away from the jungle creatures and near a sustainable water source. There's only going to be, what, about like 20 litres of water, so and that's not lasting us 14 people for very long. As nice as this camp is, we want to... Is it? <laughs> I am trying to be nice. <laughs> go and find the beach. Yeah. So one group's going to go look, 
and one group's going to stay here. Who's in the go group? Me. Can I come? Yeah. Have you got your whistles? And yes, we whistled up. Going. Hold on a minute. You think that you can walk right round this island? We in don't the water. know no, anything. I don't know. It's trial and I error, think, isn't it? I don't think. I so. think this decision has been made a little too quickly, and I just think we need to plan. Why don't we just um, stay here for another few hours thinking about it? <laughs> or we could go. <laughs> Are you not coming now? Yeah, I am. Off your butt then. We're off. I've done the children, I've been mum, I've done my business. I'm at this age now where I need to do something for me. When I was younger, I did want to do certain things, but I never had actually either the balls or the friends to do it with me, and I didn't have enough balls to do it on my own. And now I want to see if I can cope. So do you see if we go to the end of that, that bit there and see what's around the corner? I wish I had water with me. With nothing to carry it in, Abby and Fran's group set off with no water. I'm really hoping we find a beach because last night was not fun. My body does not like this at all. I hope there's paradise beyond these rocks. Finding a good camp is a key priority. They'll need a base with vital resources close at hand. The sea for food, the materials to build a shelter, and a plentiful water source. Let that be a beach, please. Is oh, my God. It's grim. I have a feeling when the tide is high... Yeah. ..that disappears. Yeah. What, the whole of that? I agree. And that's a mangrove there. Yeah. This whole thing's been futile around this side, then. This is shit. What do you want to do? I need to have a drink. So we have a good trek to get back to... ..drink town. I'm, like, shattered. We can't let this island take its toll on us on the second day. It's hot, we don't have water. Just even trekking is a risk right now. The women have left themselves exposed in oppressive 30-degree heat with nothing to drink. I'm sick. I have to sit down in a minute, I'm going to collapse. It's a long way back to their temporary camp. Oh, fuck. OK, don't panic. Shit, no, don't. Are you all right? No, no, no. Oh, right. shit, no. Wait, sit forward. Sit forward. Got to sit forward. OK, there we go. Just put your head down low. No, 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 no. Don't hit that anything. So sorry. I know. Do you stop apologising? <sighs> In temperatures like this, the women have got to drink a lot between two and four litres of water a day. If they don't, they're finished. Come on, friend. Let's do a little walk. My parents are Iranian, like, very protective, and I have literally lived such a sheltered life. All of the decisions in my life have been made for me. All they ever see is just study and get married. I want to prove that I can be independent, that I can survive, and that I can make decisions for myself. Yeah, go back, get drink. Let's see, I just feel like I'm on a bomb. I actually just thought we'd find some idyllic beach within 24 hours, but actually, the reality is we're actually only something like, oh, God, a few hundred metres away from where we jumped out the stupid boat, so right now I feel a bit of a failure. I can't believe we can't get out of here. The whole notion of surviving on a tropical island may sound idyllic, but the reality behind the picture postcard fantasy is brutal. And it may look like paradise, but trying to survive on an island like that really can be hell on earth. I've been trying to keep these tears in all along. Stop it, Jade. Just try and stop. Just try and stop, cos it'll make you feel worse by crying. It's not great. <laughs> it's not great, I'm not gonna lie. Day three on the island. The women have been forced to spend another night of misery in the jungle after failing to find a safe place to camp with a water source. Everybody just needs to find that bloody beach because I'm not staying here again tonight. No way. Stop with the tears because it's not, it isn't going to do anything. 
It's not going to change anything. I think Jade's really struggling with, with just getting used to, like, island life, as we all are. I know that sounds really harsh, and I'm not being a bastard. I'm trying not no, to be, it's but... Truth. Yeah, I get in, I understand what you mean. I sometimes, with my children, have to just say, shut up. Like... Do you know what I mean? To pull them around? Or can't you channel your anger through somewhere else? Yeah, I'm angry with Bear Grylls. Yeah. Go with that thought. Yes. Just go with that thought. Yeah, I'm really angry about girls. More desperate than ever to get out of the jungle, the women are sending out another search party to find a beach camp. Can we form a circle or something so we can have a chat? But before they leave, Jade has an announcement to make. I am not prepared for something like this. I'm really, really glad that I've come here, but uh, I don't want to continue. That's perfectly fair. What is it that tipped you over the edge that you just can't cope with anymore? Every, I mean, everything's wet. Even my, my socks are wet, my shoes are wet. I've got bites all over my hand on my face. and Yeah, they go in and that was, not look as bad. Did you not think that was always going to happen, though, that we were going to get yeah, bitten and we were going to get wet? You're wet and you're cold and you're this and you'll go back and, and I'm have, I'm and have well. food. I'm unwell. I'm unwell. I've been bitten to shit. I'm unwell and my health comes first. And If we found the beach today and if we did find the glorious beach, that things could be so different. <sighs> I don't know what to say. I know I can say. I don't want to. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's all honesty. Yeah. Put my hands up, you know. Yeah. Put my shriveled, hanging <laughs> nail. <laughs> Bitten the hands up. <laughs> Jade, I'm really enjoying the experience, but I don't like that I've been bitten on my face. I feel like shit. I'm just looking at myself and I, I look like shit. I'm just kind of a bit over it. It's like, you know, if you don't want to be here, just fuck off. Unable to persuade Jade to stay... Fox truck to Bravo. The women have no choice but to use their emergency sat phone to request her evacuation from the island. I know it's total bitching, but... I'm just going to be honest. Um, she comes across really um, unintelligent. She is not intelligent enough to actually realise what she was getting herself into coming on the island. Bye, love. I can't get up. I've got nothing on my feet. After less than 48 hours on the island, hairdresser Jade is making her way to meet the boat that will take her back to civilization. Waxing my bikini, I haven't even shown my legs yet. <laughs> the truth is, for the women on this island, every single one of them will have a low point. It is just a nature of survival. No. No. This is all about seeing who, in those moments, who rises and who crumbles. Right, everyone take a whistle. Thank you. Great. The women urgently need to get their search for a camp underway and find a permanent water source. Their original supply of drinking water has run out. All they have now is one muddy puddle. We've gone that way, we've gone that way. The one direction we haven't gone is that way. Yeah, that's where we are, I think. This time, 58-year-old Forrester's daughter, Fee, will lead the expedition party's hunt for a beach. I'm used to being in forests, oh, and I'm not going to be really happy if people start telling me I'm going the wrong way. Yeah. The most important thing is that we go, and we go in a straight line. Seven women volunteer to join Fee on the trek, including furniture maker Kate. She's got the sense of direction I'm following her. Abby, Fran and three others stay behind in their temporary camp to keep the vital fire alight. We will come back with the beach. Please do. Yeah. Go on, move on. Fee's plan is to cut right through the dense jungle interior to the opposite side of the island. This is not a decent route. It's full of vines and everything. <laughs> We're in a jungle. I know. Splitting up your group is a high-risk strategy. But if you do decide to send out an advance party... Preparation, preparation, preparation. It really is fundamental to good survival. And you've got to prepare for any eventuality. One small mistake can quickly spiral out of control. I've got our uh, group water so we can keep hydrated. With rations restricted, they've only brought two litres with them in improvised bamboo cups. 
In this heat, that's likely to last less than an hour. I love it. I actually think that's really tasty. It is nice, isn't it? And the bamboo flavours it. In the last nine or ten years, I've been made redundant four times. I went from being this high-flying career woman to nothing. I don't think the children have anything about me that they would talk to their friends about. You know, Daddy designs roads for a living. I don't think there's anything that makes me amazing to them. I have to finish it and have to do it and make my children proud of me. Fee? What? What about that way? That's downhill and there's lots of sunlight, which means... No, we've, we've, had, like, we've had lots of patches with lots of sunlight. What we need to do is get up here. Fuck. George, I'm just going to forge your head. She's going through anything. Doesn't matter what it is, Fee's going to go through it. She's on a mission. George, I have no idea if this is going to work. Who gives a fuck? At least we're trying. Fee's expedition party are now deep in the island's jungle interior. Ah! What? what? Rip my trousers even more. <laughs> they couldn't get any more ripped. Fluids are running dangerously low, and they still have no idea how far they are from a beach or a water source. They're just losing so much water. And just... In unrelenting 34 degree heat, the group are now sweating a litre of water an hour. The more we're sweating, the more we're losing, aren't we? Is that us run out of water now? Yep. Yeah. Oh dear. They've run out of water, which is pretty stupid, actually, I think. God, this is nuts. Lost and adrift in the jungle interior, the women have no idea when they'll find their next drink. It's hard work. It's just draining. <sighs> that thing in the spider's web. Is there any way to get fucking through? This is looking better. Wow, look at that. Sky! Woo! <laughs> I can smell the sea. Fuck! If we get there, can we have a celebratory swim? If I'm not wearing any pants, so we'll just have to go for the full, full on mask. Full Monty. Whoa! Look. I can feel it. Yeah, it's here. Oh, wow! I can see a fucking palm tree. Woo! Unless I'm delusional, that is the fucking sea woman. This is for us. Guys, we found it! Is there a beach? Yes! Oh, God! Woo! Look at this. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, it's been so Yes! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, oh, my God. It's like a wow. Oh, the relief. Did you ever think we wouldn't make it? I honestly didn't. We did it. I know I'm going to cry. Come on. Oh. This is the most beautiful beach. I've ever seen, and you know, if it was the most disgusting beach, it would still be the most beautiful achievement because that in there is horrific. We're going swimming now in that cool Pacific water. With the discovery of the beach comes a lifeline for the women. Honestly, I feel so dry, dehydrated. Basically, my mouth was feeling like Gandhi's flip flop. Um, no energy. Oh. We can clean our teeth and we can comb our hair. <laughs> and I found some flip flops. The expedition party have discovered a beach, but they're yet to find a permanent water source. It looks like it might rain. So we might actually be showered on all night time. Shit. Coming down dark, we have no water, we have no fire, the sand flies everywhere. So, you know, there is potential for it to be amazing, but right now I'm just thinking, <laughs> oh my God, how are we going to get through the night? With night drawing in, the women have no choice but to sleep here and return to collect the others in the morning. I can actually smell myself. Yeah. I completely hum. 
Yeah. I buy outfits. The worst but... thing is our feet. Yeah. With no shelter, the group will have to take their chances with the elements. And the frustrating thing for me is we all bloody knew to go be prepared. Oh my god. 3 a.m. and the heavens have opened. Shepherding, freezing cold. I don't like this. The women's expedition party discovered a beach to base their camp, but haven't yet found the key to their survival, a sustainable water source. We had a dunder about, well, all of the palm fronds that we found for our bed. They're soaked through, stranded and dehydrated. What the good thing is about getting this wet is that we can wring out our shirts and suck them, and I'm really not joking. At the minute, we are barely coping with the situation in which we find ourselves. Barely. Are we? Hardly, hardly, actually. Barely. Because we didn't prepare properly. No. That is the bottom line. And now we're sitting in the fucking rain again. Incredible. In the height of storm season, the weather can literally change in the blink of an eye. You know, one minute you're going to have scorching sunshine, the next thunder, lightning, torrential rain. And in these sort of extreme conditions, even the thickest jungle canopy is going to give you precious little protection. Seven a.m. It's day four on the island. At their temporary camp, the night of torrential rain has also had a disastrous consequence for the five women left behind. The fire went out last night because of the weather. All the kind of wood and everything we need was wet. So when we put it on the fire, it just, it just made the fire die. It's just gone out. The situation is critical. Without fire, the group have lost their only means of purifying the water from the muddy puddle. They're now down to capturing rainwater in Beth's poncho. This is what we're resorting to now. Roof water. On the other side of the island, the expedition party is also having to rely on an alternative source of hydration. These coconuts are making my bowels move a little bit. So I'm going to have to go and look for somewhere <laughs> to try and do a poo. I may as well just do this. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've got no fucking chances. <laughs> the women set off along the beach, scouring the area for a sustainable water source. We saw all those riverbeds, and I reckon this is where one of them obviously comes out, because we've got yeah. this massive drainage point of all this fresh water. Hang on. Are my eyes deceiving me, or is that a huge water source? <laughs> it's slightly muddy, but it's not salty. Yay! <laughs> we found water! Ooh. We just need to find a container now to boil it in and fire. <laughs> The discovery of the water source means the women can use this beach as their permanent base. Right, let's get going. But before they make a camp, they face a daunting trek through the jungle to collect the others. Have we got any water again now? No, we've got nothing. Have we not got any coconut water? Nothing. nothing. We've got nothing. So we're going on this trek knowing that we're going to get absolutely fucked and dehydrated. Now, honestly, I have no idea if this is right, but we've made a plan, so we've got to stick to it. Navigating under thick jungle canopy is always going to be difficult. It's going to be unpredictable, you don't get reference points, you haven't got the sun to guide you. And embarking on a journey like that in 30 degree heat with no water, really, you're on borrowed time. You need to do it like you mean it. Let me show you. Brilliant. The women are marking their path to help find their way back to the beach on their return. Found a period tree. <laughs> it's on its monthly right now. <laughs> Let's go this way. It looks like there's a bit of a path. I think we should be going more that way. Which no way. way. No. That's going back on ourselves. Exactly. We just, we've just got to keep going this way, I'm afraid. This is actually the opposite direction. This is, we're going back towards the beach. What the fuck is this? The expedition party are deep in the jungle interior and have mistakenly headed north in the wrong direction from their temporary camp. Now completely lost, they're doubling back on themselves. You know, you have to ask yourself the reason they haven't come. Do you think they're not coming? Well, the 
got to come back. Abby and the others have been unable to relight their fire and have run out of drinking water. They are now desperate for the other women to return. I'm really fed up. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, four days, 100 metres from being dropped off. It's crazy. Which way do you think our current base is? Well, I think it... Oh, fuck. I'm so confused, I don't know. The expedition party remain lost and dangerously dehydrated. What has happened there? I was just calling, so that hopefully the base camp will be able to hear the hello and make a sound back. Hello! <laughs> Listen! Shush. And shush. Shush. shush! Shush! Blow again, it was a one whistle response. Hello! Yeah, that way. They definitely whistled. I wouldn't be surprised if they couldn't find the whistle at the other camp, and that's why they didn't reply. <laughs> That's, that's, that's a bird. bird. It's a minor bird. So it's this fucking I bird. I think it's birds, yeah. Fucking bird. got a bit say. prematurely excited. Right, where the fuck do we go now? Moving through jungle, you get wall after wall of dense undergrowth. And what happens when everything looks the same, it's so easy to lose your bearings. And then you get that rising sense of panic. So that big tree there, it's got all my slash marks in it from the way we came. I think you're getting really confused with the directions because if you go up that hill, that is where we just came from. Except we came up from a beach there. We did not come from there, Fee, because I've been marking trees all along that route there. I tell you, no, no, there's a, there's a much clearer way of saying it. The ocean... Your, what I would say, Fee, at the moment, is that your way of saying it is that I'm right and everybody else is wrong. You're the one who's confident to say, I've got a great sense of direction, but you're not taking anything from anybody else. Oh, yeah. There's another slash mark oh, here. Oh, no. We have nothing to drink. We don't know where we are. Let's do my in. Can't remember the time I felt this Thursday. How critical do you think our situation is now? I'm absolutely crapping my pants now. All I care about is water. That is all I care about, water. It's more than 24 hours since the expedition party left their temporary camp and are now further away than ever. Back at base, the situation is critical too. Well, they're not coming for us today, are they? Happy fucking Mondays. The women left behind are struggling to find dry wood to relight the fire, and without this, they can't purify the remaining water in the puddle. And they've barely eaten for four days. Do you think we should start a fire? Yes. Do you want to start clearing all that shit off the fire, Fran? I can't, my heart's beating like that. Oh, so is everybody's, Fran. They're all in the same boat. Now. Let's not be bitchy, please. People can manage and people can't, and we'll have our ups and downs, but let's not bitch. I'm sorry. No, Deep come and sit here. Don't talk. Just come and sit here. Come and sit on the comfy chair and sit there. No. Okay, don't let anyone fuck you off. Breathe in slowly, please. I've got a problem with so the crying. Well done, comment, I've got then. a problem with her sitting on her arse saying she doesn't feel well and not doing anything. All our hearts are beating fast. Do you, you didn't just order me about all the time? I because you do not. Oh, my God. No, that's God. not true. That's absolutely oh not God. true. I'm on the Thursday. And I mean, you yeah. We're in day four now. She needs a fucking rest. Oh, and that's it. it. Thank you. Just remember to how you felt when you felt shit, OK? Yeah. And leave it there. <laughs> Tension in the camera really high. Oh, my gosh. It's just so hard. And I'm not going to leave this, so I've got this bit. I don't know how many days. Next time on the island... I think that's genuinely shitty, walking away and letting the rest of us die in a big way. We need to find food. That's the big issue in the camp. Woo! Yeah! Get it, get it, get it, get it! This island either wants to decompose you from the outside in... Ah! We nearly got killed, actually. ..or eat you alive. Everything around us is trying to kill us. Ah! Yeah, it's a scorpion. I'm dropping like flies. We've not even started yet.
two uninhabited Pacific islands. More than 5,000 miles from the UK. One will be inhabited by 14 British men, while a separate island will be home to 14 British women. For six weeks, they'll be utterly alone. Holy shit! With only the clothes they stand up in and a handful of basic tools. Filming everything themselves. When pushed to the limits of human endurance, will it be brute power or mental strength that wins the day? We just caught a prehistoric animal. Who will have what it takes to stay alive? Tonight, we follow the men's island. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. This could be the worst decision we've ever made. This time, it'll be harder than ever. They'll have to endure the height of the harsh tropical storm season. Bring it on, Mother Nature, I say. If this is the worst you can do. They'll have to find their own water and hunt for their own food. <laughs> you lazy bunch of bones! Have these modern day men got what it takes to survive? That's the hardest thing I've ever done. Four days ago, I dropped 14 ordinary British men on a remote Pacific island. They've eaten next to nothing. Limpets are horrendous. And after three days of brutal tropical storms, the group began to fracture. What is the matter with you? Nothing the matter with me, sir. Leaving three people threatening to walk off the island. I cannot face another day on here. I'm not going to make the rest of the time on the island. I've been having a laugh up until I heard one of my teammates say they wanted me to go. This has been a prick. Bollocks, case, absolute bollocks. I'm not having it. I am going off this island because I'm not being held responsible for that. 22-year-old graphic designer Joe, builder Andy, and now construction manager Paul are all threatening to leave the island. It affected you more than I thought it would have. I came here to get away from shit like this, not deal with it every day. So we are three men down in one day when the odds are against us at the moment. And without a full complement of people, we're going to really struggle. You just made this survival thing probably twice as hard. OK, slightly less tactful, you guys. We stood here and talked for an hour. If it really is going to be 11 of us today, us 11 have got a lot of work to do to get through the rest of the day. So if you guys are not prepared to commit to the rest of the group, boom, go. That's right. I've, I've made my decision. I've had enough. I want to go now. Basically, we've realised that a candlelit dinner with a glass of wine is a bit better than uh, being here. Look, we knew it was never going to be easy. But it's not the survival bit that's got to me, it's just all bullshit. I think that's genuinely shitty. Like, I think that's walking away and leaving the rest of us and letting the rest of us down in a big way. Not only is it a selfish thing to do, I think it's the most selfish possible time you could go when, like, all hands are needed. With Paul having made a definitive decision to go, the group are hoping that other builder, Andy, will now change his mind about leaving. Don't leave because of someone else. If he's going anyway, stay and get, get amongst it. How can I possibly stay, man, when a guy is leaving because of me? If you had left, he would have still gone. Andy, you, you so stay, that means you can accomplish six things at a time instead of five. I'll stay. I'll stay. I'll stay. I'll stay. <laughs> awesome. Well done, Andy. I'll start. Yeah! Good boy, Andy. That's really... I'm really pleased about that. It's less worry. And it's a heartache to see the others go, but you know what? We're stronger. We're stronger with 12 and 11. As the weather breaks, Paul uses the emergency satellite phone to request his evacuation, along with Joe. This is Paul. I would like to come off of the island. It's either me or one of the others go. 
and I don't want me to be used as a scapegoat. So I believe I am stronger than that person and wouldn't regret this decision. It's going to make everything so much harder. We've not been here for five minutes, really, and we're losing two members of the team. I'm an happy man. I want to be a happy man with a tub of Pringles and a Mars bar. You can only encourage them so much before you end up spending a third of your day encouraging somebody not to leave, when that could be better spent time getting the things we need. Water, fire, shelter, food. Having lost valuable time, the priority for the 12 remaining men is to finish a shelter before another storm hits. We are running on empty, but we are being stubborn and persistent. Fortunately, Andy decided to change his mind about leaving. At this point, there's still so much to do. We need all hands on deck, so losing three people would have been a massive blow. Right, Piers, I'm off. You're off, mate. Well done, mate. See you again, eh? Yeah. See you at being Blasey. When I mean, looking to go. I turn round and uh, shake your hand, mate, but we're No, it's fine. Uh, f yeah. I'll, I'll, uh... We're sort of structurally integral at the moment. See you later. I don't want to spoil fun, gents, but is there any possibility you could step out of the area while we just start running these struts across? Continue your conversation, just sort of 10 feet over there. Uh. <sighs> Andy! He didn't even acknowledge me. Did he not? No, didn't even turn around and say, dicky bird. Unbelievable, spineless wonders. Fucking hell, lads, what were you thinking? What were you possibly thinking? Just before we came out here, I bought a brand new Golf. And it's white. It's from the... Oh, it's beautiful. 500-pound wheels. Lovely view, though, isn't it? After just five days on the island, 14 men are down to 12. It was a bit emotional saying goodbye to everyone. Yeah, of course it was. But... I mean, in a short time we've been here, we'd make quite a strong bond, but... oh, oh, yeah, of course we have. Now the dead weight's fucked off, let's get on with it. I ain't got the time to it. We've got to build a fucking house for tonight. When people leave a survival group, the positive thing is that what it does, it galvanises those who remain, making them even more determined that they can survive. The new group may be less in number, but it will be greater in strength. No, genuinely, I can't believe uh, that after five days, we're down to 12 people. It is a shock, isn't it? Come on, it's a massive it shock. A, I mean, do you think you'll stick it? Yeah. The whole oh, yeah. thing? Yeah, I've got no doubts about that, yeah. We've been talking about for the last kind of uh, two days, really, that it would be a great shame if anybody left. But I now think we need to look at it positively. And as harsh as it is, perhaps we've streamlined, actually, and more determined. I think those have stayed, you know, have right, showed right. a certain determination. We've got no personality clashes now in the camp. Everybody gets along, everybody really likes each other. We're going to have some really good bonds out of this. Not only the achievement of doing it, which we will, and a new friendship is going to develop between us all. Teamwork makes the dream work, Vic. Yes, it does, sir. Stop staring at my sexy bottom, though. Why it's not? upsetting me. I could feel your eyes penetrating my underpants. <laughs> Morale in camp has lifted, but events of the past few days have taken their toll. Oh, I'm absolutely connected. The men have barely eaten since they arrived on the island some five days ago. I do feel like we're staring down the barrel a little bit. We're going to have to pull something out of the bag or go very, very hungry, it seems to me. Are we not wise to have a real good recce of the island? There's going to be wildlife somewhere around that rocky bit. Yeah. There's got to be. We need yeah, to yeah. really go through the, the interior of this island to find out what's living where. We could come across, like, you, you drive in the country and you see all of a sudden a field full of rabbits because they love a certain area. Yeah. It might be exactly the same with the agoutis, exactly the same with the lizards. I think it's a really, really good shot, mate. Yeah. Boys. 5 a.m. the following morning, the hunt for food begins. No heroes today. We don't want anyone losing a leg or arm or anything like that. You've got your stick there, haven't you, fella? I've got a stick. Can I grab a stick? Woo! 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 dance first! A hunt dance! Woo! Yeah! We have an alpha male. 
in our family. And obviously in my house, I'm it. The dogs know I'm in charge. My wife lets me think I'm in charge. My kids look up to me as if I'm in charge. <laughs> Alpha male, you know what I mean? I'm Johnny Wise, Muller, I'm Tarzan, I'm all them things. I'm looking forward to being able to know that I can, come the zombie apocalypse or whatever world issue will befall us, that if push comes to shove, I could still provide for my family. My dream is for them guys to go, that's my dad, that, that's fantastic, my dad did that. Iguanas live up trees, is that right? Yeah, keep your eyes absolutely peeled. Shit, I wish I had me glasses. To assure that these guys have a fighting chance of surviving, I've made sure there's enough water, indigenous animals and vegetation on this island to keep them alive. But they've got to have the ingenuity and the skills to find it, hunt it and kill it. Fuck, they're shallow, aren't they? We need a weapon. We need a spear. OK, try that, try that. Come on, boys, let's get one of these. Uh, they're going deeper. Stingray's one, survivor's nail. <laughs> Anything that's heart is beating in its chest, I will eat it. Yeah. My biggest observation about living in a jungle is how quickly you lose your sentimentality. When I look at something, I'm not thinking that's beautiful or look at the little creature. I'm thinking, can I eat that? Hurry up, there's an iguana. What's that? Just straight through. Oh, yes, 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 yes. You keep eyeing him. I'll go out and round, push him back to you. Stamp on him, he flip flops. It's there, I could see it. There's some stingrays, guys. Get it, 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 get it. OK, he's it. Go, 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 go! Get him! Oh, and, and you get him! Oh! Get him behind it! Oh! <laughs> Cut him off! Get him, get him! Get it, get it, get it, get it! Oh! <laughs> there he is, there he is. That's dinner. Son of a bitch! He's gone. A death man could hear us coming. We are top predator. We've got to stay that way. If we're going to survive, if not, we'll be going home shortly. The men's first day's hunting has produced nothing. We are winging it. And if it weren't for being such a stubborn person and so, so positive, I think I'd have been on my way a long time ago. We're starving and dehydrating slowly. It's not a nice way to go. The monsoon is coming. Here it comes. Here it comes. Bang down the hatches. In the middle of the night, the men are woken by the most vicious tropical storm yet. Oh, 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 oh. Whee! Fucking pissing down. <laughs> it's amazing from uh, nowhere you get that really big wind. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. Where's the pan to protect the fire? Fuck. Fuck, you know. Shit. Wow, it's coming in. After yesterday's exhausting and fruitless search for food, the men must now spend precious energy saving their fire. This is where we dig deep, boys. This is where we dig deep. But for some, it's becoming too much. Just really, really tired, like unbelievably tired. The lack of dry wood. <laughs> the problem, really. Lack of dry wood. So tonight's going to be a bit difficult now. Barney, these things are eaten, tested, my man. <laughs> I know. It's what we do in adversity, what makes us men. Ooh, ho, ho. See that? Wow! Woo! Come on, Mother Nature, do your work! which it has been since about four o'clock this morning. And when I say hammer it down, I mean hammer it down. It's, it's relentless. But anyway, my body's starting to take its all now. Um, I've got blisters all over my feet. I'm shivering and shaking all the time. It's just bloody horrible. It's whooped my ass big time. In fair play to these other guys. I mean, they're like gladiators. Unbelievable. And in comparison, I'm a pussy. These are older guys. 
and you know, and he is starting to come up as part of the seams. No food, no sleep, wet, cold, beaten up. It takes its toll. How's the wood looking, Dan? Terrible. Everything's just absolutely soaking wet. After a night-long struggle, the men managed to save their fire. But now they're exhausted. And it's a perpetuating cycle, isn't it? The more you lack in energy, the less you can do. Having barely eaten in the last week... Belly's rumbling. ..their situation is getting desperate. We need to find a solid source of protein and carbohydrate or we are going to seriously struggle. It's getting to the point now, if we don't eat properly in the next few days, I can see other people leaving this island. Hunting we will go, hunting we will go. Come on, let's rock and roll. The men head out once again on the search for food. But today, 51-year-old builder Andy is too tired to join them. You all right, mate? You OK? Not really, no. You look exhausted. I'm not sleeping at all. Maybe 20 minutes. And even when I am lying there, my brain's still whizzing away, you know? It's starting to drive me fucking nuts. Mm. And I just hope you all. Oh, mate, what? I'm worried about Andy. Yet again, he woke up this morning to say that he's not had a decent nice kid. What can you do, you know? Come on, fella. It's all right. How about this? Let's me and you build a bed with some comfy bedding and a roof. Let's make that. And you've got a decent bed. Right, come on, me and you. Let's go. These are alligators on this island. Son of a bitch! Led by cleaning facilities manager Vic, the hunting party have pushed deep into the island's interior. What have you seen, Vic? Alas, nothing. But finding food in the jungle is no easy task. Wow. It's just full of ants and eggs. Snake! Where? Danger lurks around every corner. Somewhere here is a brown snake. Been like shit off a stick. This is good bait. Shit. There's a scorpion in here. Whoa. I do not want to get stung. Yeah, he's gone. Shame. Bastard. I can taste him from here. There's a lot of things that can kill you on this island. Snakes, spiders, crocodiles. The longer I'm here without a proper meal, the more I realise that if something's going to fuck us up, it's probably going to be a lapse in concentration. Oh, you fucker! There's bats everywhere. Straight out of that tree there. That's where the bats live. Ooh! Can we eat bats? Or is that what give you HIV and Ebola and all sorts yeah, they, of Yeah, don't they carry uh, AIDS? Forget it, we're not eating bats. This island looks very peaceful. You could even say heavenly. But if you look just in a little bit more depth, this place is an accident waiting to happen. So why are you doing this then, fella? I think because my life has been like one adventure, you know, moving from Tenerife, Lanzarote, America, all that kind of stuff. But then, uh, last 17 years, I've been stagnant, doing nothing. So I think this was a way of sort of saying, right, off we go again. And that it is, my friend. Yeah, it certainly is, Jesus. If only I'd have known. You're regretting it? I am at this moment, mate, if I'm totally honest, yep. And my biggest regret, if I do go, would be letting you lock down. I'm trying. I'm really trying. It seems like Andy's already given up. I'm desperate not to lose another person, you know? I can't go from 14 down to 11. I'm dropping like flies. We've not even started yet. Is that not a cable track? Uh, you might be right. Mm. After a fruitless morning in the jungle, some of the men have set their sights on a far more ambitious prize. We're up cable on Tim. Let's just slow down there. See those trees? Mm. That's where it comes out. Yeah. 
28-year-old website consultant Kyle has spotted a crocodile at the end of the beach. Five is going that side, five is this side. Keep your eyes behind you. Which the men are hoping to ambush. He's going to see when he comes out. Along the coast, 29-year-old paramedic Barney and cameraman Ross are off to try their luck with improvised fishing rods. I'm going to be incredibly positive. We're going to get um, at least a couple of fish. Yeah. At least a minimum of a couple of fish. Yes. I've delivered three babies in the course of my seven years in the ambulance service, uh, and that's a pretty special feeling. But it's not as glamorous as everyone makes out. You soon realise it's largely dealing with drunk people in gutters, vomit-ridden kind of students. I love Famous Five, Swallows and Amazons. Something about probably going on your own adventure. It takes you back to your childhood, doesn't it? Climbing trees, building dens. It'd be nice to think I've come off the island feeling a little bit more macho, a little bit more popular with the ladies. There's a lot of fish down there. Come on, positive thoughts are going through the rod. Oh, I've got a big one! Woo! Fuck! Ugh. Down. The men have been attempting to stake out a caiman for almost two hours. But so far, they haven't seen a thing. What do you think? I think some of our hunting team is always ready in action, ready to go. Like the coiled spring. Fantastic we get caiman, but you also need to get water, fire and food. I am starving. Go on in, mate. And plus, everyone's just getting eaten to shit by these sunflies. Well, let's uh, return to camp. Start to finish, absolute joke. Everybody just went up there, asked about it. We had no plan when we got there, no nothing. We were like Keystone Cops. <laughs> so that's going to be great. All right, I'm going to gamble this. Oh. <laughs> hey? There you go. I've been bouncing it. Yeah. Mate, didn't get any fucking better. Yeah. You ain't got to worry about creepy crawlies. OK, how about this? If you have a decent night's kit tonight, you stay. I will do that, I promise. OK. Are we happy? I'm happy, mate. Yeah, you're a wonderful man. Top man. I'm going to hold you to it, you know? I know you will. <laughs> hey, come on. Bring in the love. All the cupboards are bare. After an exhausting day, the hunting party have nothing to show for their efforts. It didn't look healthy, some of these boys. Some of them look like maybe gone on hunger strike. Well, I'm absolutely burnt out. Today's a day where I definitely feel like I am starving. So the average British man needs about 2,500 calories a day. But the reality of a survival situation here, you know, you're working hard, you're hunting, you're building shelters, chopping wood, you can easily burn in excess of 4,000 calories. The mass of that is simple. If you're burning more than you're taking in, you're going to starve. Can you just let the lads know that we've gone fishing? Oh, I'll have some energy still left in me. With nightfall approaching, the men are desperate to salvage something from the day. Ah! Oh. What the fuck was that? Something just fucking... Oh. Something stung you? Yeah. Oh, fuck me, do I know about it? You can't see what it was? No. Oh. Definitely wasn't a scorpion, was it? I have no idea. Mike to India, Mike to India. Cameraman Sam uses the emergency sat phone to call the offshore medical response team. Charlie has been stung on the toe from something in a wood pile. Fuck me. Oh, shit, there's a scorpion, yeah. It's a scorpion, guys! Where is it? Let me kill it. Yeah. Scorpion! We just had confirmation it is a scorpion. Over. It's a general rule of thumb. The bigger the pincer, the smaller the stinger, the less deadly the scorpion. Bark scorpion, enough venom in that stinger to kill a man. Not good, man. Not good. I don't know much about scorpions, but I think there is a kind that's very, very poisonous. We were told before we got here that that could kill you. Fuck, man, that's not what we need. The medics have asked Sam to urgently identify the type of scorpion that stung Charlie. Ah, dude, is it, is it painful? painful? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
OK, so that length, that is what? Two, 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 three. two inches long. So he's got big claws, which is a good thing. The bigger the pincers, the less the venom, apparently, so fingers crossed. He doesn't look like a bark scorpion, does he? The treatment is symptomatic, please. Uh, the response camp updated on the condition of the patient, over. Copy that, will do. Fucking made is so sensitive. So, uh, good news from the description of this little bad boy here, mm. from that pincer, that probably means he's not super toxic. We're going to keep an eye on you, make sure that that doesn't swell massively and you don't get any other allergic reactions. It's like someone's driving, roasting hot needles in and out. Yeah. I think you're milking a bit now, mate. Oh, no, I need to suck it up, don't I? Oh, wait, come on, you're supposed to be English. <laughs> Thankfully, it wasn't particularly poisonous, but I s it must have hurt like nobody's business. Poor guy. I Charlie, do not need Charlie, anything over, thank Charlie, you. Charlie, seriously, keep your weight I, off. Do you want to... Oh, actually, maybe... Keep, keep your weight Easy. <laughs> no pride. Not nice to see anyone like that, really. The boy is what I would like to call OTG. He is out the game. The medics have advised Charlie to stay off his feet for the rest of the day. Let's go and be the saviors of today. Go on, then. OK, uh, Rod. With now only an hour to sunset, paramedic Barney and cameraman Ross set out to make a last-ditch attempt to catch dinner for the group. But to get back to the headland where they've seen most fish, they face a treacherous scramble across the rocks. Uh, that's quite hot, isn't it? And the tide's coming in fast. So I feel there is a bit of a risk, actually. I don't like to take risks. We're not going to gain anything by walking back now, are we? Let's, no. let's do it. Oh, no, no, wait, 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 sorry, hang on. We have to wait for the tide to go out, and then we're making that gap there. So the Pacific really is just a vast ocean. It's actually the largest in the world, covering over 60 million square miles. You've got these fierce ocean currents. They swirl around these little islands. And if you get swept out into them, you really genuinely don't stand a chance. The next stop that way is the Galapagos Islands, if the sharks don't get you first. No, 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 no. Oh, I don't know if this is a good idea, mate, or not. Whoa! Taking quite a risk just to get a fish. Um, it's because we're all so hungry. And you've got to take risks, haven't you, really? What do you think? Is this a bit dodgy or...? Good. As long as we're on the same wavelength. The sea's a lot rougher, though. Get swept up in. We're mince me. <laughs> Just one of those gets you. Okay, Ross. Barney and Ross finally reach the point where they want to fish, but it's now going dark. I turned round to see a huge wave, probably about 10 feet, engulf Ross, and then Ross was gone, like that. And then I ran down, I managed to grab him, I pull him out. I've never been so terrified in my life. 
Finally see what I did. Afternoon, guys. Where you been? Hello, boys. <laughs> I'm shaken, to say the least. Oh, my God. Oh, dear. Do you want some water or something? Make some room for the guys. Yeah, There's yeah. massive wave crashed right over me. It swept me straight out on the rocks. You know ah. where we were fishing? Yeah. yeah. Straight out, like that. Grab the rocks back up. And then another massive one took us both down. Can we, can, oh, can we please see no more fishing at night then, please? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You are a yeah. true yeah. team man, aren't you? It's really made me realise just how careful we need to be and how careful I need to be and about how vulnerable I am. Despite feeling as a young guy that actually you are invincible, out here it's just not the case at all. You all right? You're fresh. New death experience. Yeah. You look shaken, man. I am shaken. Yeah, you have a drink. Shaken, yeah. We did get some fish, though, right? Seriously? <laughs> get back That's out there. That's what you take from that. <laughs> yeah. Tell you what, this is one hell of an adventure, isn't it? It's turning out to be a real day. And then a mice game, this. Good night, everybody. I'm sorry I'm not being rude, I promise. Get, get some rest, mate. 51-year-old Andy hasn't slept well since arriving on the island. I'm absolutely exhausted concerned he'll leave if he doesn't get some quality rest, the group are hoping his new bed is the answer. And he's got the skill set that we absolutely desperately need on the island, you know. He's a builder by trade, so he could shortcut so many of our processes. So, you know, I want him to stay. He didn't, you know, I'm sure he didn't come on the island to fail. So if you have a decent night's kit, then you're not going to leave us. That was the deal, wasn't it? If I have a decent night's kit. All right, then. Five a.m. All of the men are sound asleep, except for one. I'm feeling dreadful. I've got an ear infection. I'm shaking. I know I'm shut down. You know what I mean? So I'm not happy. I'm not happy, buddy. Right? Andy woke up this morning. First thing he said to me is, "I'm off." Crying out loud. Paul and Joe have just gone. That pause just gone because of you, Andy. If you thought you were going to go, why didn't you? I just found out that we're losing Andy and our final builder. It's um, almost panic stations. Are you suggesting we're not leaving? Are you fucking bollocks? Yeah, right, I'm walking away. I'll log you tied to a tree before you fucking go. Andy's threatening to leave is all very well for a lot of these patients. Um, part of me just wishes if he's going to go, he should just fuck off, really. <laughs> I'd like to say I want the boat here now. Over and out. Bye. Just a day after deciding he would stay, Andy uses the emergency satellite phone to request an evacuation. Andy Pandy is leaving today. Something that I kind of predicted, really. Um, I think Paul was just an excuse. So really, it was a shame that Paul had to go because Andy was always going to go in the end. Take care. I can't give myself or you guys any more, I'm sorry. What can you do, you know? We're down to 11 people after not even a week. It's just embarrassing. When people leave a survival group, the remaining members can often feel this sense of desertion, betrayal, maybe even a little bit of jealousy. I mean, who wouldn't want to leave what for many of them really is a living hell? But ultimately, losing a negative influence will be a good thing for the long term of the group. Feeling pretty tired today. Where well, you could do is some food. Eight days in, with barely a thing to eat and delayed by Andy's departure. Fucking little fish. The men resume their daily search for food. I don't know why people choose to do this in their free time. Fish? Yeah. I don't do a lot of it. Father-in-law lives it. Absolutely fucking lives it. He's a dick. Every day is a winding road. While the others hunt, 29-year-old Barney has volunteered for fire duty. I'm happy, actually, just hovering back at base. The group are worried that his near-death experience yesterday has knocked his confidence. 
he literally got swept off the rocks. He's got bumps and scrapes, and if it wasn't for Barney saving Ross's life, things would have been really serious. I think it's just a reminder of what this place is like. It just feels like everything around us is genuinely trying to kill us. He's such a nice guy, so easy to relate to. But I just felt a little bit sorry for him today, so I'm going to keep my eye on Barney. I think he was crying there just before you got the camera. He is finding it really tough. He is seriously lethargic, looks seriously homesick. He needs to get himself back on his feet. Having already lost three men, cameraman Ross is worried the group could soon be in danger of losing another and persuades Barney to join him on a fishing trip in an attempt to lift his spirits. I thought um, you looked really low and that you weren't enjoying yourself and just looked like yeah, you no, wanted to get true. out of here. I was, I was a bit worried that you might go fuck it and leave, you know? I think everyone's having their low days too, right? After any sort of frightening near-death experience, it's very normal to become withdrawn and a little bit introverted, and people tend to then do everything they can to avoid having to face that same fear. But trying to survive on a desert island, the men don't have that luxury. They need to conquer their fear, otherwise it will conquer them. I'm finding it difficult now, actually. Um, I feel like I've had enough of being here. And every time I think about my family, I find it more difficult. And I realise that this week is the week that I'm meant to be um, at Centre Parks. I just wanted to kind of apologise. There's a little blue fish down here. So have you got a spear? Yeah. That makes a fish. It's a fucking good fish, I know that. Bastard. In their first week on the island, the men have barely eaten. That spear's not worth donkey poo. Fucking rubbish. All of their attempts to find a decent meal have ended in failure. No luck today, but that's why it's called fishing and not catching. Today's lunch for 11 famished men is slim pickings from the jungle floor. Guys, Taste it. this is exciting. Scorpion. It's got a few ants on it at the moment because we killed it about half an hour ago. Oh. But who's up for an elite? Yes, please. Fuck it, I'll eat it. Heaven in your mouth. Burn the ants off. Da, da, da. <laughs> Where's well, the game? Why are giving it to him, then? Why can't I have any? Oh, because you're too northern. I'm it's too northern. Tree, I'm feeling victimised because I'm the northern <laughs> one. <laughs> That's it. You can all kiss my ass. <laughs> you're a brave man, Dan. What's it like? It's pretty gross. Is it? It's like eating crispy poo. Oh. Is it? Yeah. Oh. I'm glad it was you, then. <laughs> In a survival situation, every mouthful counts. Tell you what, it's better than limpets. Is it? <laughs> but one scorpion between 11 grown men is nowhere near enough to save them from starvation. It's hard to concentrate. I'm noticing that energy is so low. I'm so bloody burnt out. Man, this place wears you down. It really does. Just tried standing up and then started sort of got the standard head brushes. And then really just, I was just sort of rocking backwards and forwards. I don't know, only for a few seconds, but enough to put me on my ass. It's getting to the point now, if we don't eat properly in the next few days, we're going to drop like flies. Despite their rapid physical decline, the men have no choice but to keep on hunting. It's quite a daunting thing, really, isn't it? The idea that we might come across Heyman today. 37-year-old Sam has persuaded Barney to join him in a bid to keep him busy after his accident. I can't convey how tough this whole thing has been, actually. Far, far tougher than I thought. I'm really, really struggling to... Uh, to stay focused and... to keep up with the rest of the team. There's a berry on this tree here, look. Doesn't look edible, does it? Shit the dog! Shit the dog! Oh. Look at that! A big, big lizard under here. It's iguana. I can see it's a big one. 
Yes, keep going. Yes, there you go, good. Okay, you see him there? I'm going to flick him out. Okay, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Here he comes, here he comes. Okay, watch that tail. Okay, you got him, you got him. You got his tail? Put him, 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 put him. You absolute <laughs> star! Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's, let's talk about this, because actually we could use our meter live, could we not? Oh, my gosh. Well done, <laughs> mate. Well done. Oh, hoo -hoo! Oi! Woo! Oh, yeah. 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 It's an iguana! Oh, Get in, buddy. <laughs> Get in. Look at the size of that man. Wow, body, that's half a leg. That is a cock a bunny, lad. That's dinner and supper. Well done, fella. Nice oh. little bunny. He's a beautiful creature, actually, absolutely beautiful. Look, he's like a little dinosaur. Guys, it's my little contribution to today. Wow. It's an amazing feeling. You really feel you've done your bit for the team. It's like when you give a really good Christmas present, you just really want to give it. I was thinking, guys, about killing that iguana. Yeah. I think that's probably a bit of a personal thing I need to get over. Hang well, on, killing hang on, someone? Hang on a minute. Well, because, why, um, is it, why is that such a bad thing that you don't want to kill something? Because the reality of it is that we all eat meat that's killed at some point, and uh, we're so far detached, aren't we, as we all know, from the slaughtering process, that actually, but for me, maybe that's a challenge that I need to face. If you kill it, you will you have repercussions, think... sleepless nights, in oh. Edwin? No! I don't give a... Blood, gush, stinking. Let's put this in perspective. That bothers you. I've been a paramedic for four years and seen some nasty yeah. things. But I think I'd like to test myself. Do it. Do it, you want to do it. Don't do an Ozzy Osbourne and bite its head off, though. Funny, how are you feeling? It suddenly feels uh, much more real when you're having to sit here like uh, the executioner, you know. <laughs> I no, it damn it, you, Iguana, it, go, to it goes right over, doesn't it? Like this. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. I'll go and get him. Go and get him down here. Yeah? Woof. So you got, got, got him, got him, got him. Yeah. Right, Ronnie. Yeah. So if you're able to hold his head down, actually. Spot on. Food you're about to provide. Great effort, Barney. Well done, Barney. You alright, mate? Yeah. Fucking. Okay. A couple of my really close friends have got iguanas, and uh, I really don't know how they'll view this. I don't think you. I hope they understand that this is completely a survival situation, and I have uh, their pets are not in danger. <laughs> they can leave me <laughs> in the lounge without them. <laughs> it's a very mix of emotions because you really have provided and you, everyone's got some food tonight, including myself. Hopefully it gives you a more a greater respect for the animal than, than if I would just sit around tonight having somebody else killed it. I'm going to enjoy that meal more than anyone tonight. I've seen it myself so often, you know, the quiet, humble individual who the group maybe initially discount but suddenly they can become the man of the hour, just in one heroic moment. And these brave people earn respect through their deeds. They don't earn it through, you know, bluster. And really, that's what British courage is. After a week on the island, the men can finally sit down to a decent meal. Looks like proper food. Isn't that just an incredible sight? Yeah, nice and caramelised on the outside, be beautiful. This is going to be like... <laughs> is he eating his own neck? Yeah. yeah. That's just sick, Barney. <laughs> they do say that Mother Nature watches what you do, yeah. and if you work hard enough, she rewards you. Today, she did. Good job, Barney. There you go, guys. Well done and well congratulations. Done. <laughs> well done, Team Dalton 11. Dalton 11, yes. Yeah. Let's have a little taste, pass them on. Oh, it's delicious. delicious. really lovely. Oh, so good. The first time eating something which is ridiculously, amazingly brilliant.
Oh, that's like a good piece, Barney. Yes, it is, mate. Oh, yeah, oh, Barney he, boy. There's more meat on this than I thought. Turtles, turtles. Hey. Oh, yeah. Eleven of us sitting around that caveman just gnawing and slurping and chewing and staring into the flames. Great. Grr. You know, I literally cut his face in two. There you yes. go. Yes. Feeling increasingly manly as the day goes on. Mm -hmm. See what it brings the group. It all feels worthwhile. No complaints with this at all. No, yeah, great. I think your head might be my favourite bit. With food in their stomachs, the men's thoughts turn to Andy's unoccupied bed, which is now up for grabs. No wanky in the individual bed, please. OK, I've completely misunderstood what it's for. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone not want out here? Dude, after the third night, Every morning, I woke up prouder than a honeymooner, though. <laughs> Seriously, you could want, like, a single man A-frame. Come see me in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Buzzing tonight. Buzzing. It felt like a bunch of 11 mates sat around the campfire on a wee holiday, eating great food. Fantastic 14 is now the excellent 11. <laughs> I'm under no illusions that shit times will come, but in the meantime, I'm going to embrace the good and the good. It's right now. Help! Back in! Next time on the Women's Island. I'm coming! Radio in now. Medic now. Oh, my God. What's just happened? Just collapsed. Oh, I'm you, dear. <laughs> yeah. The group are still separated. Oh. Everyone needs off here. It's not a programme. It's ridiculous. We can't navigate. And we're all Two uninhabited Pacific islands. More than 5,000 miles from the UK. One will be inhabited by 14 British men, while a separate island will be home to 14 British women. For six weeks, they'll be utterly alone, with only the clothes they stand up in and a handful of basic tools filming everything themselves. When pushed to the limits of human endurance, Dang! will it be brute power Three. or mental strength that wins the day? <sighs> That's the hardest thing I've ever done. Who will have what it takes to stay alive? Tonight, we follow the women's island. This time, it'll be harder than ever. They'll have to hunt for food. You're all right, you are. Find water and build shelter. Uh, oh. Living on the island in the middle of tropical storm season. It's like a tornado. That is terrifying. <laughs> we need a radio in medic now. When pitted against the extremes of nature, <laughs> have these Monday women Got what it takes to survive. Guys, <gasps> that is a big. <laughs> Four days ago, 14 British women were cast away on this remote, uninhabited Pacific island. <laughs> what snake? Already, one woman has left the island. I need to go. Like, you know, if you don't want to be here, just off. Who's up for this? Some of the group stayed behind at the makeshift camp, whilst an expedition party went in search of a permanent base with a sustainable water source. It's not salty. Yay! <laughs> but with no idea how to get back to the others, I've ripped my trousers even more. They are now lost in the thick of the jungle. Hello! And are completely out of water. We have nothing to drink. We don't know where we are. The women left behind have just rainwater to drink. Their fire has gone out and panic is setting in. Julie, you just order me about all the time. 
With both groups now starving and critically dehydrated, their time on the island could be over before it's really begun. It's day four. The five women left in camp have been waiting for over 24 hours for the others to return from their expedition. I feel dreadful. Honestly, I feel absolutely dreadful. I never thought I would be so desperate for food and water. We all want to get out of this camp, but we know the other group are coming back for us. We can't set off because we'll lose them. The women are trying to relight their fire to purify water from a muddy puddle, but their wood is damp. Um, that's it. It's moving. And, oh. oh, every time. What the hell are we doing? It's actually just another Groundhog Day of the same shit. It's like the best camping ever, isn't it? The best camping ever. <laughs> Mind you, I've only ever been camping twice, I didn't like it. However bad your situation is, you have to dig deep and find that inner strength to stand any chance of surviving. That's simple principles that really make a big difference. And one of those is positivity, positivity, positivity. I might as well, honestly, I, I, might, I might as well have gone and sat in my horse's field for five days and not eaten, but just sat in the muddiest part of the horse's field. But the difference is I might have had a horse for company. I don't actually mind because I love extremes of weather. I like roar and wind and lightning and torrential rain and... Oh, lovely. I'm pleased for you. <laughs> Seriously, I'm really chuffed for you. I've always wanted an adventure. And I think, God, I haven't done that much for myself over the last 55 years. Should have done more. Should have seen more. I get really wound up over the most stupid things. It's like, you know, when you buy expensive toilet roll and then you, and you tear it and it doesn't tear along the perforations? That really winds me up. <laughs> I, I try to stop myself talking a lot, but I do like to think that other people can get away in edgeways, you know what I mean? This is day four now without any food, so we're really going to feel it today. Earlier, the women found some yucca, a type of potato. Mother of two, Julie, has decided to peel it, despite not having a fire to cook it on. Oh, now, do you know what? I've just wasted that now, but we could have boiled it in soup. That's what Beth was saying. I would please leave you. Know. Just... She goes on about those potatoes anymore, I'm going to stack them. After 24 hours without a drink, the expedition party are dehydrated, hopelessly lost and wandering directionless. Walking is painful now. Physically, I'm I just hope we can find a drink. Oh. I can't remember that time I felt this thirsty. Mm -hmm. Careful here, guys, it's really slippy. Oh, shit. Hey. You're right. Super slippery. It's really slippy. Oh, God. Oh, hey. Who was that? That was me. Oh, my God, there's a caiman. <gasps> that is a big. Oh, yes, I can see it. Straight ahead. Oh, shit. Oh, my oh. God, that's f***ing. Yeah, it's enormous. It's watching us, though. We actually... Well, I just can't... I, I literally yeah, we must can't... have walked past his nose by that much. Didn't spot him. Do we throw things at his hip? No. No. Though potentially deadly to humans, a crocodile of this size could provide tens of thousands of calories for the women, who have barely eaten in days. Billy big balls, that. That is about. serious Billy big balls. I'm going for that one for dinner, then. Yeah. Not tonight, not with a heart of fire. We wouldn't want to tackle that. No, as we don't have a sharp knife on us. We'll be back for you, man. Sleep with one eye open. With hunger and dehydration sapping their energy and with hunting equipment left at camp, the women decide to walk away from this potentially life-saving feast. Right, let's get out of here. Yeah, it's not been easy on this. Yeah, it's all right, it's all right. It's all right. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. 
<laughs> well done. As we know, Cayman can take off a leg and arm, drag you into the water, one, drown you, one, eat you. Not great, yeah. really. So we all want to be out of here as fast as possible. And as an exit operation, we're doing quite well. Oh, don't you dare! <laughs> yeah. Too late! Too late, baby! It's too late! <laughs> For these women to succeed, they've got to have faith. They've got to persevere and reunite, because there's power in numbers. My mantra is leave no man behind. It's that sort of attitude that's going to make the critical difference for them. I've got a beach on my left. Oh, no. Let's get on there, let's get an orientation. The women have been trekking through the jungle for two hours, but instead of finding camp, they've stumbled upon another beach on the north of the island. This is so hard. No-one knows what the right decision is. <sighs> so thirsty. I've never been so dehydrated in all my life. I'm thinking about drinking seawater. <laughs> I know you can't, but I'm that... Uh... The women scavenge the area and strike lucky. We found coconut! Oh, my God! <laughs> It's just enough to keep them going. Come on, let's go, let's go. Let's do it. As they head back into the jungle to try and find the others once more. At camp, the damp conditions are proving problematic. I really, I was to trying to start another fire. Just finding the dry stuff. But there's no sun. We can't see the sky. Oh, babe, I'd... look at your little hands. My hands, I'm like, like, look. It's just from the wetness. They're going to crack. And they just, I, I'm in agony. I've achieved everything I wanted to in my profession. I'm really happy with where I've got to, but I think my job is starting to define me, and I don't want that. I want to find out who I am again. I think I have a need for adventure. I just feel so driven to do something completely different. Crazy. I can't let it get in my head. You can't let it get in your head. No. It's important to be positive. Right. It will work out. Yeah. It will. We're about to work out how to make a great shelter today. Unable to make fire without dry wood, a shelter will protect the women from the elements while they wait for the others to come back for them. Push it down. Push that down. No, this. no, this the top one. Push that down. Tell you what, there really is strength in numbers. You really feel that there's so much more work and so much more pressure on you when there's just a small amount of you. Oh, shit, that was it. There we go. Now, with just five of us, it feels pretty lonely, actually. Half an hour later, and the shape of a shelter is almost complete. It looks pretty good. <gasps> oh, fuck's sake. Positivity, positivity, positivity. The expedition party left what they've nicknamed Coconut Beach nearly two hours ago, and they are trekking into the thick of the jungle, trying to find camp. No, we're going back on ourselves. We need to go that way. There's the other coast feet. With the afternoon temperature rising to over 30 degrees... I'm so thirsty. The need for water is more critical than ever. My biggest motivation is to get to the others. Convinced they're close to camp, Georgie and Lauren go ahead to recce their surroundings. We're just looking. Get back to where we are. No fucking way. Can't be. We are. No, we can't be. We haven't done one massive so Yeah. Really? The expedition party have spent all day in the searing heat, only to find they've walked in one big circle back to Coconut Beach. Guys, do you want to come down? OK. Without a GPS or visual landmarks to guide us, Human beings are naturally prone to walk in circles, even when we're convinced we're going in a straight line. Put dehydration into the mix, which slows down brain function 
and the women find themselves in crisis. OK, so there's some bad, bad news. In fact, where we were. Yeah. If the women don't find a proper water source soon, their time on the island will end. Bad news is we fucked up and we've just done a massive circle and we've wasted a load of energy for nothing. How the fuck did that happen? All too easily. We're in the jungle. Got no we have reference no point of reference. And we're tired and dehydrated. I vote we, we bed in for the night. I think I'm going to cry, George. I think I'm going to cry, with you? This is absolutely fucking ludicrous. Ludicrous. Physically, I don't know. People have got holes in the feet that are turning green. We can't sustain this. Oh, my God, what are they going to do back at the camp? Four days ago, I abandoned a group of ordinary British women on a remote, uninhabited Pacific island. After separating over 24 hours ago, the expedition party are desperately trying to get back to camp. But disorientated by the jungle, they remain in the north of the island. The women left waiting at camp have no fire to purify water and are also worryingly dehydrated. Mum of two, Julie, has been down at the rocks washing the women's muddy underwear. There's only uh, five of us here at the moment. The other group have got lost. We've no idea where they are. A couple of our group are just moaning all the time. I mean, for God's sake, it's supposed to be survival. It's not supposed to be a holiday. You know what I mean? We knew it was going to be tough. Facing a second night isolated from the others, the claustrophobic jungle environment is testing the women's mental strength. But it's been very difficult to stay positive. I don't feel we've got anything to look forward to. I just feel like we've been dumped. Can I say something positive? No, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> I don't feel too bad, you know. And I just think it can only get better. To be fair, Julie, you really haven't gone on any expeditions to get anything. You kind of conserved your energy by staying in camp the most of the time. You are good at talking the talk, let's do this, let's do that, but actually actively doing it is a different story. Maybe that's why you're think... feeling so good. I, I appreciate everybody is really fucking pissed off. All I said was a bit of positivity. I've spent fucking hours rearranging wet knickers and washing yeah. all around I this don't camp want you to and do squeezing that, it out Are and hanging it up for you. I've been biting my tongue but all the time. You, all, you don't want everything. me to do it. Personally, yeah, I feel yeah. that constantly wringing out people's knickers that aren't even here in other clothes is futile. Them. The group dynamics of these five people is not working. Yeah. It's not productive. And I'm sat here yeah, thinking, I, I am stuck with this. Where? I'm all but we collected it at night as well, Julie, but, but you just walked be. with us. I know what I said. Why the fuck do you keep yeah, a fire oh, going then? To me, no, do you know what? I'm what not, I'm you're saying right. Is, what I'm saying is we should collect wood. And I'm so I'm doing the selfie now because you really need to know how I'm feeling. <laughs> We have no fire. <laughs> we have nothing to drink <laughs> because we can't boil it to purify it and sterilise it. <laughs> I don't know where everyone else is. The other group have gone missing and I'm really worried about them. <laughs> but I'm, I'm just questioning, like, how on earth are we expected to survive in this? Coconut Beach in the north of the island, the expedition party remain out of water and have decided to stay the night. I think that needs to go higher. Yeah. They're building a makeshift shelter. We've basically spent two days walking for four and a half hours. That's nine hours in total we've spent walking around this bloody island trying to get back to where we started. Uh, everybody's very dehydrated. We've not had actual water uh, for two days. It's just blah, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And then the other side would go like that. Yeah, brilliant. 
After spotting a storm on the horizon, the women scavenged a beach for containers to collect rainwater, their only hope of rehydrating. Um, we're going to have to support the bottles and this polystyrene thing so that they're upright and they'd spill. I may have to keep it behind my slug so that the tide doesn't wash it out. Finding fresh water is so important. That combination of very oppressive 30 degree heat plus the humidity, you know, over 90% can easily mean the women get through a litre of water an hour. You know, that is a lot. Unless they find water, I reckon the women only have one more day. As night draws in, the women abandoned at camp are attempting to light a new fire to purify their muddy rainwater. All we're doing now is trying to make a hole. Out, it's out. Oh, for fuck's sake. So we thought we'd get a fire going tonight, but it hasn't happened. Well, I think we'll start with the hydrators by now. I don't know where the other girls have gone from the other camp. I don't know where the hell they could be. Or what they're doing for shelter up. Excuse me. What they're doing for um, shelter. All day, Julie's been at me non stop. I've come on this experience to try new things, to push my comfort zones. No. Guys, can someone shine their light over here? Because I swear I'm hearing noises. Please, it's like a. It's someone moving. It's coming close to me, please. It's Julie. It's Julie. Oh, fuck my life. Oh, oh, oh shit. On Coconut Beach, the storm is still in the distance, and the dehydrated women are pinning all their hopes on their makeshift containers collecting rain. I've never actually wanted water so much in my life. Check this lightning out behind me. Yeah! It's so cool. As long as you can actually see the line of lightning, I can feel like a weather girl. And here we have... Big fuck off shiny storm. And to the north, we have a storm. And just there, we have a bolt of lightning. And I imagine around here, in just a moment, we're going to have a bolt of lightning. And I imagine just about there, we're going to have a bolt of lightning to the right. But sometimes it jumps from cloud to cloud. In a moment, we're going to have a strong northeasterly bolt of lightning right there. Hang on, we're having a few technical difficulties. Thank you, Bob. 11 p.m. With the storm still a way off, the women bed down for a long night under their makeshift shelter. We're going to spoon on the side. All lights off. Nighty night. Sorry, Bloody hell, have you farted in my face again? Sorry, I did. It's 5.30 a.m. and the storm has finally hit the island. The women are hoping their containers are full of rainwater. We've just had the most uncomfortable sleep of our lives. It's just a nightmare. Just hope we can get from water in as soon. Can I, can I just share something with you, everybody? Bad, really bad news, we have no water because the tide has washed our bottles away. Nothing. Fuck. Fuck. Oh, fuck. I feel like I could cry right now. I seriously think I could cry. I think I need a lot of shit. After almost 48 hours with hardly anything to drink, the women sourced just a handful of coconuts. Oh, my God, this one's gold! Oh. Ah! But with only enough liquid to have a few sips each, one woman is finding it all too much. You all right, Kate? Just struggling. I'm really struggling, guys. Oh, come on, come on. I'm really, really missing my girl. 
I've decided to do this because, having been made redundant four times, it left me feeling worthless and a burden on everybody. And I wanted to set myself a challenge and do something that was extremely difficult, but that I had to do, and that I can't, I can't walk away from it. And have more confidence in myself and make my children proud of me and make my husband Chris proud of me. I just feel like I've bitten off more than I can chew. No, not at all. Honest to God, you're doing brilliant. You're doing absolutely brilliant and they're going to be so proud of you. I know. I just want to speak to Chris. I know. And have him say, keep going. You can't do everything through your kids and your husband. You have to have some me time. But I like doing everything through them. OK, well, that's cool. I think initially when people get marooned, it's all about the physical, the fact that they're tired and they're hungry and they're hurting. But after a while, people become accustomed to that. But then the battle becomes something much more meaningful. Actually, the fact that you're missing your loved ones and those battles can be much harder. I'm so thirsty. I haven't managed to find any water. I'm so thirsty. Look at that. The good news for the women is that in tropical storm season, oh, it's raining. the weather can change in an instant. Guys, guys, bring your pots! Yeah. Running like a bloody cat. The return of the rain proves to be their salvation. Yeah. <laughs> Baby. From the most miserable situation to the most joyous situation. Yeah, see? We go up, we go down, we go up, we go down, we were right through the floor down, and now we're uh, elated. Rehydrated. Time to go! And with bottles full of water. And we came down this one. The expedition party set off, confident they'll finally rescue the others. OK, so we're on the right track. In the jungle, the mighty jungle, <laughs> the lion sleeps tonight. Oh, wimbo, oh, wimbo, oh, wimbo, oh, wimbo. It's the women's fifth day on the island. And the two groups have been separated for over two days. Spirits are buoyed with bottles full of rainwater, but the expedition party are going round in circles, trying to return to camp to rescue the women waiting. We want to stay in a straight line. Nobody's disagreeing with you. We will have to make little diversions. No, that way. Mum of two, Kate, remains desperately homesick, missing her family. Just do my din. Oh, cos I'm not doing another night in this jungle like this. That will be it for me. And I've made that decision. If we don't you make it back... feel strongly about it now? Yeah, and I know the people who matter to me the most won't care if I come home early, to be Kate, honest. Kate, calm down. We're going the right direction. It might not be... I'm not talking like to a you. Path. I'm talking to George. I know. Fucking attitude and a half. You do it. And you can kiss my fucking ass. If these women are going to survive, they've got to learn quickly how to work together as a team. Pulling together is paramount in times of crisis. And the truth is, we always survive better when we cooperate and when we don't fight. Um, there's no need to please, no negativity. We we'll just need to keep on this positively. I know, you've got a really bad attitude, Kate. I haven't, I'm just fed up. You do, you're speaking to everyone with a really bad tone, so... Can everybody please stop arguing? Because it's yeah. really not helping. Yeah. But maybe we should just, for the next ten minutes, all of us just say completely yeah. nothing and just concentrate on walking and following yeah, feet. No, that way. Guys, I think we need to go that way. Hold on, hold on, hold on, what? hold on.
At camp, the group have spent over two days with no food, drinking just small amounts of rainwater, waiting for the expedition party to return. And damp conditions have brought out the jungle critters. Right now, up all my ass is proper itchy. I've only got a few bites, but above it, my face, my hands, cheeks, my face, we've just looked at it ass. Oh, yeah, we have just looked at a bum. The rain last night was ridiculous. Like, I, I was just I was so ill that I just need to sleep. Like, my throat, I can't swallow. I don't want to do this. I want to show everyone I can do this, but it's really hard. Whenever I have a problem, my parents always sort me out. Right now, my dad pays for everything that I want. My, my boyfriend looks after me, especially on nights out. They see me as their baby that they still need to protect. I don't do anything by myself, and I, I want to be more independent. I want to do something for myself and just be able to be like, yes, I did that. The worst part is I'm starting to think that my parents are right. I shouldn't have done this. Back in the jungle, Forrester's daughter, Fee, has taken over leadership of the trek back to camp. But it's only taken half an hour for the mood to disintegrate. We really strongly think we need to go right here. I I've got to say I do agree. Oh, brilliant. We have right. been travelling in this direction. No, we haven't. We've been travelling in that direction. No. Yeah. No. Why is it you're so adamant you're right all Just the time? hold on. Just, I'm not adamant I'm not Yes, you are, because listen, you're listen, dismissing listen. everybody out. Listen, I understand. V will not listen. She's. I live in the woods, so I always circumnavigate woods. Well done. But we spent the night last night in a place that we had just left. You never noticed that, was that we'd double fault. back on us. That but was my fault. never noticed we'd double back. Because she wasn't in charge. It's often when stress levels are high that all the social graces fall away, uh, and it's also when tempers fray. They've got to learn quickly how to communicate better as a team. At this point, their survival and that of the women at camp depends on it. Just we have to spend another night in this jungle like this. I'm out of here. You need to listen to people. You don't listen to anybody. I do think that you really don't listen to anybody. And this is, is actually... Is this life or death? I'm just so tempted to tell you to take the lead and do it. Because yeah, because then, then if I job, leave, it's my own fault because I'd have got us off. I give up. OK, I have the machete. Ah! Oh, my God! What? Help! Becky! Becky! I'm coming! Call the medics! She's Run. gone! Run's fainted! Radio in medic now! She's absolutely <sighs> fucking boiling. Oh, my God! With Belinda, the only doctor amongst the 13 women lost with the expedition party, the group at camp must radio for a safety response team to intervene. Doctor, Dr. Bravo, are you copy? Can you send your message over? Brian, passed out. They are on standby on a nearby island in case of emergency. Um, she's boiling. I need to get some air to her. Oh, my God. This is way fucking beyond any fucking joke. Everyone needs off here. I swear to God. It's not a programme. It's fucking ridiculous. Having gone to the rocks for air, after five days with barely any food or water, Fran has taken a serious turn for the worse. The safety response team arrive. I think the problem is with Fran. I, d I think she's not a moaner. I think she's been far iller than we knew. We're going to put her on a stretcher, we're going to take her on our boat, and then we're going to do proper assessment and see what needs to happen from, from there. With the group at camp a member down and the expedition party lost with dwindling water supplies, the women's existence on the island hangs in the balance. Okay, well. <sighs> The 13 women have been split apart for two days. She's collapsed. Oh, my God. 
and the group at camp are now a member down after Fran collapsed and was evacuated from the island. Another one gone? I knew she was poorlier than we thought. Out at sea, my safety response team are assessing 24-year-old Fran. Uh, it says 72 and 146. I don't care how, like, dehydrated or faint I am, the rest of us are exactly the same. I shouldn't get any privileged treatment over feeling a bit sick. I'm just really pissed off at myself. I know I can do this. Do I faint 400 times to not allowed to take me off that thing? After five days without anywhere near enough water, Fran has succumbed to dehydration. And with the expedition party still nowhere in sight, the other four women are equally at risk. So many people dropping on. I'm just worried there's going to be more and more because people can't stand these conditions. Fran's coming back. Fran's coming back. Is she really? <laughs> Fran's body temperature and heart rate have returned to normal, and in Dr. Belinda's absence, the safety response team deem her fit enough to rejoin the others. Is it like heaven, seeing us? <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure there's things she'd rather see than us. I had to beg them to let me back on the island. I just had to come back, though, because, like, then it would be only four girls here and I couldn't leave them. I, I'm so glad I'm back. The expedition party have been walking for two days, trying to find their way back to camp. This is where I feel we should go. This looks like a pretty good path. Having wrestled leadership of the group, homesick mum of two, Kate, is now guiding the women through the jungle. This is going to go well. Just keep going. You, this way you want to go. The thought of not getting there, stressing me out, you know. We will get there. I'm not confident to take responsibility for this. OK, well, where are we going now? Where are we going now? Just no keep more going concentrational straight. arguing. Just keep walking. It's just that way. Keep going, keep going, keep um, going. Well, I'm losing my confidence now. I don't want to lead. I'm gonna... sorry, I don't want to lead this group. I don't want to. Yeah, I'll but... lead it. You tell me where to go. Or, do you know what? Or you lead what you think, and I'm just saying... No, 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 I... no, I'm not going to say another word, because I'm having a complete crisis of confidence in myself. Yeah, I am so scared. We're all scared, because you were so confident. Yeah, but that's... I know, but... Now it's gone. My confidence is gone. I'm sorry, I should no, keep my mouth shut. You lead the way, please, please. Fuck! After over two days of waiting and now dangerously dehydrated, the women at camp are finally taking their fate into their own hands. They haven't found us, so we've got no alternative but to find them, because we've stayed and we've waited, I don't, I don't even know, two days, three days, to be rescued. If we don't find them, I think we're going to make a raft and go to another island. I, I just never, ever want to see this spot ever in my life again. Until now, Staying put has actually been the surest way of allowing the others to try and find them. But after days with no fire, dwindling water supplies, no food, the women now need to weigh out the dangers of striking out into the unknown against the risk of waiting it out with no more resources. Now we have to just go and blow our whistles madly to see if anyone's hearing us, and that's what we're going to do. That's the plan. Blow, blow, blow. Everybody in this group is good at blowing, yeah? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think we're all well, I think we're all seasoned blowers here. Yeah, yeah? girls. <laughs> yeah. Unaware of the expedition party's whereabouts, the five women are searching the coastline. Our journey to find the other team begins now. Whoa. Are you alright, sweetheart? Yeah, sorry. Me Cracking me. on. Good on ya. Oh, it's so cold. Oh my gosh, my knickers are getting wet. Oh, my God, at least our fannies will feel fresher. No. Having left Coconut Beach three hours ago, the expedition party are completely lost and their water supply is fast disappearing. After homesick mum of two, Kate, quit as leader, Georgie recognises where they are. Oh, my God. I made these marks. I knew I recognised this place. The women are convinced they are finally about to find camp. 
Do you remember you, me, and Abby did a recce? This is where we came to. I know. I know that's what I was just saying. They're just down there. I'm ecstatic just because I got the hell out of Shit Creek. Fuck, that's so fucking deep. That's up to my tits, so that's swimming for Fran. It feels desperate because we feel so close right now, no! but... Yeah, we haven't had a response on the signal. Along the coast, the group from camp have entered the mangrove swamps. Oh, we... Oh! OK, OK. You can't do that. You. I've got you. I've got you. You can totally do this. One, two, three. There we go. With the sweltering midday sun beating down on the dehydrated women, 55-year-old cashier Julie is struggling. Oh, fuck. It's right, hold me. Back so, on's in now. Left and right, left and right. That's it. <sighs> okay, so feet. No, I need to leave me boots. No, you're gonna need to take those with you. You're gonna need them. So we can do it. We'll just take our time. <sighs> so no rush. We'll just take our time. Oh, freaking hell! Oh, great. Right. Yeah, this is it. This is good. I recognise this. We're so oh. damn close, though. So close. This does look familiar. We're literally round this corner. Is that a pink potty down there? Yes. So you recognise it? So we back we're at our... Coconut fucking Beach. No, we're not. Yeah, we're at, we're at Coconut we Beach. Are. You're right, we are. No. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's get down there. I can't fucking deal with this. The women have circled back to Coconut Beach for a second time. Having pushed through the jungle for two days, they're not one step closer to camp. How the fuck is that possible? How is this possible? We kept the sea to our left the whole time. After conquering the mangroves, the group from camp continue north. Guys, it's a beach! Woo! I can't believe we're here. Becky, this is what I've been dreaming of. After five days being trapped in the jungle, they remain determined to find the expedition party. So fucking close, like three minutes away. And it's only round the corner, but we can't fucking navigate. We cannot navigate yeah, through that. I'm stressed because I thought we were so close. And then I can't walk and I'm just fucked and we're all fucked. <laughs> three, three nights without water, fucking trousers like this. I can't do it. No way. I was wanting to see them and see if they were OK. <sighs> How the fuck did that happen? I don't even understand. We cannot walk anywhere on this island without getting lost. <sighs> it's a maze. It's the world's it's trickiest the maze. Should have a 30 second. Shade break. No. I need to go and see. <laughs> Another beach, but not as nice as the one we're on. Hang on. Is that a load of clothes hanging in that tree?
however bad your situation is, you can't wallow in negativity. You know, survival is about dogged determination, learning from your failures, and never giving up. Finally, back together. The women take a moment to savour their island home. We needed them. We've all got different strengths and weaknesses that can help. It's just kind of complete. Going. Going. By going. evening, with the reunited group, 13 women strong, Come on. Ooh. it's all hands on deck to light a new fire. Yes, nice and slow. But after being lost for two days, island survival has taken its toll on mum of two, Kate. It's just the, 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 the whole length. The blunt end. If I'm really honest with you, I can't see it getting any better. I feel really tired. I'm very, very emotional. It's try being part of this group. But they're not the people I need to be with. I need to be with my family. And I just need to be at home. The general feeling is, take me home, please. By morning, furniture maker Kate has made her decision. I'm not going home because I'm dehydrated. I'm not going home because I can't pack it. I'm going home because I want to be at home. You contribute so much, you really do. But it's been difficult for me because I've been missing people so much. That won't get any easier. No. That'll get worse. Oh, my God, it's horrible seeing another one go. I thought she'd hang on in there. We need everybody, and she had good knowledge of bloody building and stuff. Mum was fucking pissed off. I just think it's, it's weak of her to do that. She's giving up too easily. We need each other to boost each other up. But it's the old thing, isn't it? Pets, mums and pets. It's the old pull. Men can do it, but a lot of women can't. After barely a week on the island, a second member of the team has quit. And with power in numbers, the women's ability to survive is diminishing. I'm a bit pissed off. I think it's a great shame, because it was a fantastic experiment to see how 14 women could cope in this situation. And two of them have gone already, and I don't think that shows us all in particularly good life. Next time on the island... Sometimes out here can feel like you've been hit by a major disaster. So thin now. All sorts of bones appearing that I haven't seen since I was a bloody teenager. We need to find a solid source of food or we could be facing meltdown. Every fuck is bitching and moaning that you're doing fuck all when it comes to wood. I'd say we're 95% sure we've got a caiman in our second oh, trap. fuck. Oh, oh, Sam, get out of the water, mate. Watch him, watch him. Go now, go now. Uninhabited Pacific Islands. More than 5,000 miles from the UK. One will be inhabited by 14 British men, while a separate island will be home to 14 British women. For six weeks, they'll be utterly alone, hey! with only the clothes they stand up in and a handful of basic tools, filming everything themselves. 
when pushed to the limits of human endurance. Will it be brute power? Big shit, big fella! Ooh, snap it! Or mental strength that wins the day? They're too cute. I can't. <laughs> Who will have what it takes to stay alive? Tonight, we follow the men's island. Ah. Oh. It's a scorpion, guys. It'll be harder than ever. They'll have to endure the height of the harsh tropical storm season. A bit like being in a disaster film. They'll have to find their own water. Yeah! And hunt for their own food. Watch him, watch him. Go now, go now. That is amazing. Have these Monday men got what it takes to survive? We're all sweating our bollocks off up there, fella, and it looks like... Yeah, yeah, fair enough. ..looks like you're doing f all when it comes to wood. <laughs> Two weeks ago, 14 British men were cast away on this remote Pacific island. Woo! That was the damnedest thing I ever did! But now three of the men have quit. Now the dead weight's f***ed off, let's get on with it. And the island has taken its toll on the 11 that remain. I'm, I genuinely have never been so terrified in my life. You can see why. Having barely found anything substantial to eat, they're now on the brink of starvation. We ain't conquered jack shit. Nothing. It's a bit like being in a disaster film, or, you know, or when um, you hear on the news that people have had um, a ty typhoon come through or a flood. There's no water, there's no electricity, there's no food supply. It sometimes out here can feel like you've been hit by a major disaster. Day in paradise. It's been 15 days since the men arrived on the island. And so far, they have survived on a meagre diet of a few hundred calories a day. So thin now, but ribs, all sorts of like, bones appearing that I haven't seen since I was a bloody teenager. Oh, hang on. Oh, hang on. Lie down, mate, if you... Oh. It's the nearest I've got to fainting, or I see him as fainting, having never fainted before, but my vision just went, like, pulsated, in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. And then before I knew it, I was on my ass. Um, so the semi collapsed. surviving off limpets and like the odd one fish. It's not going to sustain us for the next god power weeks. And I think another week of this, we'll be struggling massively just to even get up in the morning. We need to find a solid source of food or, you know, we could be facing meltdown. We're out of food. The yeah. bottom line is we don't have any food other than yeah. limpets. We're getting weaker and weaker. I certainly feel like I'm getting weaker and weaker. So my priority is how I feel about it personally is food. Yeah. I think the majority of our resources should be to getting us good fish today. Let's go. We are going to find lunch. Come on, fishy, fishy, fishy. In a survival situation, you always face one huge dilemma, and that is if you want to eat, you got to hunt. Hunting burns your energy, and there's no guarantee you're actually going to catch anything at the end of it. Any glimmers yet, Vic? Oh, I can see fish. Can you? Bastard, you. Every time you go looking for food, you're gambling. You're gambling with your energy reserves. You know what, you can see a bit lacking in enthusiasm. Oh, I'm so... I was dead on my feet. 
I absolutely do on my feet. I feel just completely gone. You <laughs> just keep nibbling it straight off end. The look of the gods is not with us today. Everyone's getting tired. Everyone's hungry. Everyone's sick of bacon bit limpets. We need some decent food. We need it quick. So we don't get it soon. We're just going to start dropping like fires. Despite the group's desperation, one man refuses to be beaten. Let's all push it to the edge. I feel fine. Another day at the office. I feel really good, yeah. Vic wants to change tactics and take the hunt to an unexplored part of the island. One kilometre from camp is a vast freshwater lagoon where he believes a much bigger prize could be lurking. One that could provide the group with the calories they so desperately need. We are going hunting for Mr Cayman. Let's go lay some traps, fellas. Let's go hunt some beast. As well as the search for food, the men's survival depends on them having a constant supply of drinking water. They need at least 30 litres a day, which they must collect on a back-breaking two-kilometre round trip. Sam, when you go past Carl, could you ask him to come and help do the water run, please? He's not shirking, is he? Hey, I'm just saying the water run he's doing, and he's chewing his gums. You do the maths. Right, let's go grab Carl. Kyle, are those crocs going to be OK for going across to get some water? Uh, is anyone else knocking about to do water? I've done a lot of mileage the last few days. I think I'd rather do something a bit more camp-based today. I've done water two days in a row, mate, so yeah. this is my third day, so... Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> Well, we've got 11 people here. Um, yeah, but they're not here now, mate. Yeah. Uh, Carl, why don't to sit here and tidy the camp, then? I'll do it. That's no problem, mate. Cheers. Cheers, thanks, Pierce. Right, off we go. Just sat in the office in front of the screens. I know there's more to life than that, so I just got to a stage where I wanted to break away from it, step away from the screens and just do something different. I like to think I can step up to most challenges. I like to see myself as someone who will see things through to the end, so... If I was the person who was struggling in the group and was a useless one, that would be a big knock to my confidence. Big knock. I was a little disappointed in Kyle. It would have been nice if he just stepped up to the plate and said, you know what, I'll step in, but he wasn't in the mood to do that today. It's not so much that I'm hungry. The worst thing is just the energy. I never for a second thought, my energy would be as low as it has been. Fuck, I can't even lift up my legs. Now keep an eye out for Mr. Fucking Gear. Yeah. See Kim and I'll scream. Yes. How big did they say they get? Fuck, not going to eat this. Six foot the cable and six meters the alligator. Oh, these are alligators. Yeah. Fuck it. I don't know where Vic gets his energy, but I need half of that energy. Because Vic has got energy all the way through the day. If I could take anything away from this island, I would like to be a little bit more like Vic Fellows. See, like that. That is actual shit. What the fuck is this Jurassic Park? That's not shit. That's not shit. That's not shit, fellas. What that's is just, it? That's mud out of there. Do you know what it is? I'm sure there's a T-Rex here. Oh, fuck, that's great. <laughs> What do you do if you see something snapping at your feet? What are you going to do? You're going to just machete it? Worst case scenario, if I can't, we can't pin him, what have you. I'm, I'm fighting for my life. He's having it, isn't it? Yeah. As best as a facilities manager can do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 47. This could be my last crazy hurrah. And what 
better way to doing it than the, the ultimate challenge of surviving. I mean, it's the ultimate challenge. Can I provide for me? Yes, I am very excited. It's Boy Scout shit, isn't it? It's we're all over it. We get knives and spears and stuff, maybe even a bow and arrow to make. I mean, how good does it get? Excited is an understatement. Yes, sometimes I have to keep... <sighs> put a lid on it to not let it get like, boom, shit! That kind of excitement, yeah. So Just keep think... quiet, keep quiet, guy, because might... if there is a croc, we'll see it. Where do caimans live? I don't know. I presume they lived in the water. I thought they lived up trees. Do caimans live in holes? I reckon caimans live in holes. Dear. Well, I'm making that up, but... It sounds good, though. If you get something with bollocks, I'm coming out. Crocodiles are ambush predators. They hunt their prey in shallow waters and are masters of the stealth attack. The razor sharp teeth and a bite that's three times more powerful than a lion. Sam. That is a caiman. Oh, look, he's up, he's up. Fuck, he's a biggie. Now, there is our baby. That is dinner, yeah. That is our dinner. Thank you. Would it be worth swimming in? Not for me. I'm not swimming in that. Not a chance. That is insanity, yeah. Bastard him. Look, look, he's moving, he's moving. He's got a bit of a ripple behind him. Look at that size of that fucking head. He's getting inquisitive, he's that little boy, isn't he? Come to daddy. We now need to find where he comes in and goes out. Okay. Wherever we are now yeah. is where they come out. Yep, yeah. dead right. That. Here's where crocs come out of the water. Yep, that is perfect, isn't it? I'm gonna make a snare to there, right towards the water. You ever caught anything in a snare before? Have I ever made a snare before? No. Oh, he's yeah. there, he's about, he's back, he's back. Where, where, where? Yeah, straight away. Straight away, see him? He fuckers got closer as well, hasn't he? That shifty little bastard's got closer, hasn't he? He's not scared of us. That's keeping on him while I'm setting the trap. That's why I keep looking past you. He keeps dropping and doing it. He's bugger him. The men have had just two days survival training where they learned how to set basic traps. But the reality of catching a crocodile that can measure up to 13 feet is a different matter entirely. This is proper Boy Scout shit, this, isn't it? He's going to test it. I'll, it. I'll test it. Yeah? Oh, oh, dinner is served. Oh. Eh? That's not bad, is it? That's all right, that, fellas. Oh. That's the one. Let's go. Let's bust a move. Back to base, yeah? Back to base. Late afternoon. 58-year-old Phil is returning from the water run with the help from Dr. Pierce. Watch your step. Yeah. It's a good thing we didn't carry with the jerry can up and down these rocks. And home. While Kyle continues to rest on the beach. There's a feeling amongst camp that he's uh, not contributing as much as he should be. It's just I feel like I've just been trying to deal with the fire and do the water. And Kyle's been kind of doing the uh, feet manicure and bit. <laughs> it's a little bit like anything in life, you know, you can have a rest, but do the work first. It's been almost two weeks since Kyle ensured the group's survival by starting a fire with his glasses. Now, when Kyle first got in here, he cracked the fire. It was absolutely brilliant. Since then, the man's not got a day's graft in him. Not a freaking day's graft in him. I get the distinct impression, Vic, that you're getting a bit miffed. I'm just getting miffed for anybody that, that springs into my mind that's not sweating as hard as me. Pull your thumb out of your ass, you lazy bastard. Yeah. I feel like I'm kind of nearing my physical limit, and uh, I think it's quite a common event. I'll come down and you're doing your feet or you're sitting by the fire. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be completely honest with you. I feel that perhaps you haven't been pulling your weight in the last uh, week or so. OK. Today, for me, has been, uh, 
been a bit of a challenging one, actually. Can't lie. I haven't been able to do as much as I thought I would be able to. And, like, when you're in this situation, if you can't contribute, you feel like you're really letting the team down. Despite the men's best efforts, it's yet another day with empty stomachs. Bloody hell. Boys, there's no meat on you. You need a bit of cake. Hey, look, you can see Piers' heart beating through his rib. Look. Fucking hell. Being hungry, it really does affect your mental and your physical state. Every step is hard when you're hungry. There would be a stage where soon our bodies give up on us. And we're not far from that. How you feeling, well? Exhausted. After over two weeks of near starvation, the men's situation is becoming critical. We're going to Tiger Lily. Desperate to catch a high-calorie prize, Vic and Dan have set multiple crocodile traps around the island's freshwater lagoon. Bingo. Ooh. But so far, they haven't caught a thing. By the look of it, it's done sod all. Fuck. Shit. Nothing, I'm afraid. On such an extreme, low-calorie diet, you're susceptible to infection and your mental capacity is low. And if nothing changes, really, you're on borrowed time. Over two weeks with barely any food going in, the men's morning routines are anything but regular. I feel like it's got to that moment where I'm probably going to need to go for a shit soon. When it comes to options, if got land or sea, I think I'm going to go to the sea. <laughs> Where are you going to go? I, I need to figure out, is it sort of washing that direction or...? He's going for it. Carl's taking a dump in the sea. Good man. Yeah, the uh, most beautiful spot in the world to take a dump in. Have you, have you joined the poo crew? So I'm one for back at home, maybe a four to five shit a day, man. A day? A, a day. day? I'm pretty good. I'm very regular. And I haven't shat until half six this morning, and now I feel enlightened. <laughs> God. I'm now part of the poo crew. But 28-year-old Piers, the group's doctor, isn't having as much success. How was your, um... Oh, the bowels. Bowels? Yeah. Any movement yet? Being stubborn. Wow. No poo in 15 days. It'll come. Are ready? Oh, and one, two, three. With no food to eat, the men still have to expend their energy on vital tasks, like keeping their fire going to boil and purify the water that they collect. Hello, hello. If you want to get a nice picture of Carl grooming himself, you're quite welcome to do that while we're all getting bored. Where's that? Just round the corner doing his toes after he's just had a swim. Today we were supposed to all contribute getting wood and then do individual tasks, and he has done nothing. I think my tolerance has kind of reached a bit of a limit. You know, if, it does, if you do let it boil inside, it does become a bit of a problem when it comes to a head like it is now. Yes. I can't, I can't hold stuff in. I can't. But listen, when everybody, and it just me, when, when, when lots of people bits and chaff and nobody seems to want to confront it, I think, come on, boys, yeah. we're teammates. Fuck it. Where is he? Look there, sat on his ass. He's taking piss, come on, man, fucking hell. Kyle! I did. I'm busting my knackers, fella, doing water, and you're doing your feet. 
I'm not doing my feet. I've come out of the water. Whatever. Yeah. It's not just me. It just seems that I'm the only one with balls to come up and speak to you. No, that's fine. Every fucker's bitching and moaning that you're never doing wood wheels. We're all sweating our bollocks off up there, fella, and it looks like... Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. ...looks like you're doing fuck all when it comes to wood. Admittedly, I'm not getting wood now, cos I just come out of water cos I went no, for a shit. We, 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 we're fucking pulling tree upon tree upon tree, and it does look like you're always doing your feet. I won't lie to you, it does. It was almost like a bit of a cheap shot from Vic. He's clearly got stuff which has been bubbling under the surface. I felt like I haven't fitted in with a group, and you know, I've done stuff to try and change that. Um, but sometimes it's just the group dynamics aren't for everyone. People are starting to free around the edges. Some of them are freeing, some of them are coming away at the seams. We seriously, seriously need to find a sustainable source of food. As the men continue to physically decline, the group is becoming fractured. And if members of the group are perceived not to be pulling their weight, they can easily become alienated. And then if those rifts aren't healed, it becomes a downward spiral of conflict that ultimately could destroy the men's community. Big difference to us. Game changer. Could be. <laughs> Fellas, look what I found. We've got ourselves a gill net. Woo! Fucking brilliant. It's pretty fucking yeah. big. Nice work. Get oh, in there, baby. What a Not what sticking the door. Yes. Rah, rah. Brilliant. Let's get ourselves some tea. If we get this net in the water, then we have our best hope yet of catching fish. For thousands of years, fishermen have been perfecting the art of setting their fishing nets. If you get it right, you unlock the ocean's larder. If you get it wrong, and all they'll be doing is wasting their precious time and precious energy. Two resources that they can't afford to waste. Nets out. Exciting times. We're looking out. Yeah. Feel quite positive. I think it will catch fish. I think it might even catch fish by tonight. Exhausted after a morning's hard work, the men allow themselves some downtime. So, boys, here's one. You can request Bear to bring you one item for the journey back. Thermos full of English breakfast tea. I am going to get a bottle of Octomore whiskey. A whole bottle of whiskey? A whole yeah. bottle of Octomore whiskey for my journey back. Bam! <laughs> if, I, if I could... Chicken pie my wife makes, and she always puts your name in it as well. Nice. Oh, oh, the right big love heart and all Pop that sort of thing. Yeah, it's dead right. He's got to see. You get tri You see if it didn't work out with you and your missus. Can you give her a number? <laughs> I, I honestly, I honestly <laughs> think there's something wrong with her upstairs, cos she really is a nice woman. How did you find such a nice woman? I have no idea. What have you done? You you must have a size Not of a, a dick clue. And a donkey. Not a clue, but God bless her. How did you meet your wife, if you don't mind me asking? I went around and knocked on her door. Did I fucking did, yeah, dead right. Did, yeah. <laughs> what did you say? Hello, I saw you at work today. You turned up to meet your mate. Yeah, yeah, I did, yeah. I wonder if I could take you out. Uh, let me think about it. I thought, oh, damn it, she went. Yeah, OK, then. Can someone it? imagine that, that you live on the set of Billy Elliot meets Postman Pat? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely brilliant, it was. So, yeah, well done, me. Well, well done, you, man. Well done, you. Spotted peers. Trotting along the beach, looking vaguely happy with himself. So I think Piers might be off to try and have uh, no way. poo Fancy number day. one. I mean, how many days has he been without a poo? He'll be 17. Dr Piers is now the only member of the group who has not yet joined the poo crew. Any luck, mate? No luck today, mate. Here we come. Here he comes. Don't do it. Dr Piers? Have we succeeded? Is it? Is it? No. Oh, oh no. No! Mission failure. No. 
Oh, no. NASA, we have a problem. Close? Be patient, lads. Be patient. Go in your medical kit, get a rubber glove, because I'm going in. <laughs> Mid-afternoon. After a couple of hours rest, the men get back to work. Come on, my son, bite. Two weeks ago, they were dropped on the island with eight fishing hooks. But now they're down to just two. Shit. Could you unsnag my line? I've caught it on the rock. Shit. Now we've lost another rod there, guys. Shit, we've lost a hook. Further down the beach, oil engineer Dan and Dr. Pierce swim out to check the net. What do we think, William? Do you think there's going to be anything on there? I'm saying it. There's lots of rocks. Anything, Barney? No, sadly not. We're hoping for the net. Yeah. So I've got to see this moment. Doesn't look like a trawl. No, I go as far as it says it looks like the square root of F4. What's wrong? It looks like we'll be going hungry for dinner. The nets are empty, is that right? Shit. What's happening, fella? This is what we call. Can't load of coral. Fuck. The razor sharp coral has destroyed the men's net. No fish at all. Oh. Shit. We really are up Chips Creek, aren't we? With no nets, one fishing hook. The situation just went from bad to much, much worse. What do you think, Phil? That's disastrous. That's no food for anyone. And no means to get food. Shit, we've got one hook left. We're fucked. So we've got one, one hook to fish for a month. It's pretty depressing, yeah. More than one. No joy with nets. Fuck, are we going to be depleted or what? Disaster. We're down to our last fishing hook. So the onset of starvation looks upon us. With morale at rock bottom, Barney, Phil and Sam Farmer head out to the lagoon for the daily check of Vic's crocodile traps. Chances of uh, catching a caiman, 4%. The caiman's definitely been here. How do you know that? Because the, the trap is destroyed. Gosh, look at that. It's almost certainly been... Uh, triggered by a caiman. The bait's gone, the trigger's occurred, and it looks like there's been a bit of a struggle, and the rope is firmly in the water. Well, that is incredibly encouraging in one sense. Very. Is there any chance that the caiman could still be on the end? There is a chance. OK. Fuck, he is. Is he? Shit. I think he's under here, isn't he? Is that no his way. back? No way. Is this his back here? Come here. We need to be a bit careful about this. I can see scales on the back of that rope. I can see there are crocodile or caiman-like scales um, just underneath the water. I'm convinced. Go and have a look. I'm convinced he's, he's there. Just be careful. Be very careful. There's no doubt about it, the caiman's there. Yeah. There is a caiman in the water right next to us now. We need to be careful, because as soon as we drag him out there, he's going to be angry. I can't quite... I cannot quite believe it. No, I, I can't either. <laughs> I cannot believe it. <sighs> My heart! Oh, Mine too. I, is your heart beating? Mine too, because he's obviously alive, right? So the crocodile is the largest, it's the meatiest animal they're going to find on the island. But when they're cornered or they're scared, that's when they're most likely to attack. And if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, you're in trouble. 
the minute we disturb this, all hell will break loose. The three of us could take him on. I think it's sensible to go and get many more hands. Why don't you two stay here? I'll run back to camp. Yeah. Deliver the news. Yeah. And we're going to pull him out of that trap. Yeah. He's going to fight like buggery. Yeah, Absolutely. Go on, Barney. Excellent. Okay. Yes. Crocodiles can remain submerged for hours before surfacing. And as a lagoon is their ideal habitat, it's certain to be populated by more than just one. There's a de definitely an alligator moving this way. It's a little bit weird looking at one that could, <laughs> one that could get you right here. And another one that's heading towards you. It's almost like we're the bait. <laughs> Barney's looking excited. What's up, Barney? OK, come in, come in, gather in, gather in. OK, so we're... Uh... <laughs> He's running. I'd say we're 95% sure we've got a caiman in our second Ooh, trap. Fuck off. Let's rock and roll, boys. Let's rock and roll. I think we nail it. Let's go. Woo! Let's go. Oh, this is exciting. This is exciting. Bingo, big fella. See that or a scaly log. A scaly log we will eat. Despite being too exhausted to help with the group's daily tasks, the prospect of a crocodile feast has inspired Kyle to join the hunting pack. Let's do it, lads. Let's go along, I feel like Gandalf with my giant shaft. How are you feeling, Barney? It's very difficult because I'm so excited and this is all what we want, but when it comes to actually pulling the animal out and having to kill it, I don't know how I feel at all. But at the moment, absolutely buzzing. Yeah, definitely feel like a tribe on a hunt. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Everyone's come out prepared. Oh, this is the most excitement I've felt since I've bloody been here. How are you feeling, Vic? I'm feeling uh, excited, but we've got a job to do. We dispatch it in a humane manner as we can. But, woo! That's how I'm feeling. When you're hunting crocs, you've got to make sure that you don't become the prey, because these prehistoric beasts are fast. Once they get hold of you, they grab you, drag you into the water, and then they strike, bam, lightning speed and incredible power. What's weird is I can see it and it's got his eye open. Looking at you. This thing is going to go absolutely Berserk, mental, yeah. absolutely mental when it comes out. Such a blessing. It's a dangerous animal, but we need the food. We need the food. This way, guys. Barney. I've got the cavalry. Getting hey. on the cavalry. Where is it? It's just, it literally is just where you can see that blue rope by the log. The blue rope oh, is wrapped God. around the caiman. Oh! <laughs> he's big, boys. He's big. OK, he's moving. We need to get a loop over that mouth. I think one of these branches has him pinned. He's making bubbles. I think he's going to do something. Here we go, there we go. Look at that beauty. He needs to breathe, doesn't he? He's hissing at us. OK, he's trying to go back. Here we go, boys. Right, where's that rope with the hook? Right, yeah. Here, here, look, look. OK, boys, we need two people on that rope. We need to pull him ashore. Is his mouth open? His mouth is slightly open. OK, Vic. Nice and calmly, boys. Come on, Vic. Whoa, ho, ho. come on, baby. Come on, Vic. Right, nobody moves his mouth's open. Yeah, you get him, you get him. You fucking get him. Let him slide round his, neck. Round his, his neck. neck. That's it, we got him. Come on, big boy. Sod. Come on, boys, come on. Right, I'll distract him. Hey, Mr Croc. Hey, hey, look at me, look at me, look at me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. OK, OK, Vic, I go now, go now. It's probably going to roll soon. Over the teeth, over the teeth. Oh, oh the branch one more, one more, mate, 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 you've almost got it. Watch him, watch him, go now, go now. You're in, you're in, you're in, you're in, you're in. You're in. Yes. Here we go, puppy dog. Go. Yes, yes. Ah, you oh, little watch fucker. him, watch him. Right, Sam, I'm very conscious of you stood in the water, mate. Yeah. There is another one in get that lake. Yeah, get out of there. Yeah, get on the bank, Sam. Sam, Sam. Sam, oh, what's your deal? Sam, get out of the water, mate. Mate, mate, I think we're good. I no, see, up there is another one in this lake. Yeah, if, you know, if he came along and nipped your heels... Let's just fucking get this guy. Have we got enough people tugging on that rope? 
Yeah, yeah, so yeah got Charles got it. There we go. Right, we now have two. That's it. He can still snap, can't he? Watch, watch his tail on your leg. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm on it. I'm on it. Don't worry. All right. I'm staying on it. Stop, stop, stop. Again, no, 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 no. Look what it's snapped on now. Take right, snapped on this one. Take your time, fellas. Right. I won't, don't cut the uh, rope. Oh, shit. He's growling. Oh. This fucker is fucking powerful. Give him a minute. I think, he, I think he speaks English. Where's the knife? I've got a knife with me. Get the knife out ready. And then, Kyle, what are you doing? You're going to drive the knife? Take right? him out. Right, where are you going to put it? Just behind his eyes. Let's right. go. Heads on, guys. Heads on, heads on. We go on go. One, two, three. We all go on go. One. Two. Three. Go. Go on, lads, push it in. Go push on, it, lads, that's the one, boys. That's it, that's that's it, it. Yes, mate. Yes, that's, that's it. Gentlemen, we have handbags. Come on. Nice team, yeah. fellas. Yeah. Take them down, boys. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Back in there. Damn it, Oh, he's twitching, he's twitching, he's moving. Kyle. Fucking killer blow, mate. That was awesome. Get in there, boys! Woo! Actually wrapping we, up we, a dinosaur. We just caught a prehistoric animal. Yeah. Damn it! it. Amazing. Feels so caveman. Great. <laughs> it feels so caveman. Yes. <laughs> if Pierce doesn't shit after eating a load of this, he's got a serious problem. I hate yours. How many people in the world can say wrestled the crocodile and killed him? Yeah. We are in an elite group of blokes. After 17 days without anything substantial to eat, the men have finally hit the jackpot and dispatched one of nature's most fearsome predators. Seeing this, it does make you have respect for crocodiles. This is a big one, yeah. really big one, so I just wanted to get it done in a clean way without making a mess of it. To pull it off and grab a croc like this is amazing. Should we rock and roll then, boys? Yeah. One. Two, three, up. Kyle. Yeah. What, what would you be doing in your normal life right now? Back home, it'd be a bit more mundane than this. I definitely <laughs> wouldn't have a croc on my shoulders. <laughs> Seriously, look how much meat there is on that bad boy. Fucking awesome. Yeah. Not only have the men proved that they're top of the island's food chain, but after surviving on roughly four or 500 calories a day, suddenly they've landed themselves a feast of just epic proportions. Just think of that fucking delicious dinner we're going to have later, boys. News of the big catch soon spreads around the island. Come on, fellas! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God! Holy shit! <laughs> oh, my God! No fucking way. You are absolutely shitting me. That is absolutely <laughs> enormous. That's amazing, isn't it? That is amazing. Hold yes. on, lads. Fucking hell. And roll, roll. Get in there, oh, boys. <laughs> A croc of this size could provide the men with tens of thousands of calories. What do you think of that, big boy? Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Listen, respect to him. Yeah. Out of the water, trap, dispatch within 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. That's brilliant. I'm yeah. pleased about that. We were very respectful of her. Oh, my God. I think I can see a plate of meat coming along. Oh, oh hello. Look at this, boys, as if you didn't need any more motivation. Today, I managed to catch a bloody crocodile. And my God, was it something. I'm normally at a desk or on a phone talking to clients. I don't kill crocodiles. God, look at that! Oh, oh, me. Get in! Unbelievable! Wow, look at that! Let the feast begin, boys! <laughs> yes! <laughs> boys get stuck in, it's like chicken. That is wonderful. Just had 
my first taste of crocodile. To me, it just tasted absolutely divine. It's nice to have a mouth full of meat, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Not just a nibble. We all get more than we can possibly eat. Here's the heart. This is Kyle's, the killer. Kyle, salute you, sir. Based on the fact that I killed the croc, I was given the privilege of eating its heart. It felt like a good feeling, almost like a the prize for doing a good job. Go on, Kyle. Do you feel like you're inheriting its strength? Like, like a boss? Um, yeah. Oh, fuck, that was nice. God, that was nice. Oh, that second piece I took was beautiful. Oh, God, I feel like it's after Sunday dinner at home. Absolutely lovely. What a lovely, lovely feeling that is. I, I feel sorry for Piers, cos he needs to open his bowels, otherwise it's going to be painful. Yeah, well, oh, he's going to open them after I this. So I was absolutely dead on my feet earlier. Completely and utterly gone. And uh, suddenly, the morale boost the team needed, needed that so badly to kick the spirits up. I think this counts as, just for today, if nothing else, more than surviving. Six a.m. Doctor Piers is feeling the benefit of last night's feast. Here you've got um, some big news for me. Yeah, I am the last member of the Pooh Club. Last man well squatting. done, Piers. <laughs> Here we go. Everyone give Piers a round of applause. Yes! Yes, Piers. Thank you. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yes, Piers. How did it feel? It felt great, actually. Really good. <coughs> I thought it was going to be really hard. I thought it was going to be like rabbit droppings stuck together. Oh, what was it like? Like a wet sausage. A wet oh. sausage? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> dreamy. Absolutely dreamy. Yeah. It's that crop pushed it all down. Lads, crocs ready. With plenty of crocodile meat still left over, cameraman Ross serves up breakfast. Char grilled to smoky perfection. Oh, that's good, isn't it? I think it's better. I think it's better than yesterday. With their bellies full, the men set about their daily chores. Look at that. We have done wood in the same time it took Kyle to get dressed. Yeah. Tell me that is the greatest thing. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Team effort, boys. <laughs> I feel like I can just lie on this beach right now and think about nothing and do nothing and not feel guilty for the first time pretty much since we got here. Is this for your personal collection? This, this is only for me. I thought so, mate. I thought that a bit slower. Up. I thought that... A bit slower. That's it. <laughs> That's it, <laughs> it. Oh, what? Lovely. Enjoy the idyllic tropical sunshine. I think life isn't too bad after all. For the second night in a row, the men anticipate a hearty feast of crocodile meat. Does everyone fancy the uh, last of the croc? I would love a bit. Yeah. As well as giving the group vital calories, the sudden intake of rich food appears to have solved another of the men's problems. Fantastic. Dan, how, how are your ablutions this afternoon? Oh, Danny had a trump and a follow food, didn't he? He shit himself this afternoon while he was making his bed. He's dribbling down my legs. Just a little bit. A little bit of boo came out. I had to squeeze my socks out. Who's that bad? Oh, God. Oh. Well, you fucking asked, didn't you? <laughs> Crocodile broth this evening. It's going to be superb. Come on, boys, dig in, please. Yeah, Pass it around. How is it, Vic? Oh, it's strong. <laughs> I think strong is a good word. There is some distinct smell of poo about this. Mm. It smells a bit like dog shit, doesn't it? Yeah. It does smell a bit suspicious, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, crikey. Phil, what's the verdict? 
I've had two mouthfuls, and that's two mouthfuls too many. I can feel the squirts coming on. The 30-degree tropical heat has spoiled the remains of the crocodile, leaving the men once again with nothing to eat. The final meal from our croc, it was basically rotten meat. It was pretty... I could... I don't want to think about it too much. It was pr pretty much the worst thing I've ever had in my life. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> oh, your shoulder pins. Yeah. Well, tonight marked the ends of our crocodile feast. From now on, we've got no more meat to eat. Now that crocodile has dried up, we need another source of food now. Oh, my God, what's that? Is that Iron Brew? Oh, my God. Next time on the Women's Island. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Thoughts turn to food. I think a bogey just came out of my nose. You can't <laughs> waste nothing. <laughs> oh, my God, there's two peglets. The first thing I thought of was crackling. Uninhabited Pacific Islands. More than 5,000 miles from the UK. One will be inhabited by 14 British men. Go, go, go! While a separate island will be home to 14 British women. For six weeks, they'll be utterly alone. Holy shit! With only the clothes they stand up in and a handful of basic tools. Filming everything themselves. When pushed to the limits of human endurance. So thin now. Will it be brute power? Three. Or mental strength that wins the day? Watch him, watch him. Go now, go now. Who will have what it takes to stay alive? Tonight, we follow the women's island. Oh, my God, there's Cayman. <gasps> oh, my God. Survival will be harder than ever. They'll have to make fire, hunt for food, and find water. Oh. Living on the island in the middle of tropical storm season. I'm still wet. Worst night's sleep. Like, surely I'm going to die soon. Hang on! Oh, shit! No, no. When pitted against the extremes of nature, these Monday women got what it takes to survive. <gasps> Just remember to how you felt when you felt shit and leave it there. <laughs> It's been seven days since 14 British women were marooned on a remote Pacific island. What? A huge snake came towards me! Look at my hands! Brutal conditions have already claimed two victims. I need to go. It's been with my family. And the group paid the price when they split to find a sustainable water source. We cannot walk anywhere on this island without getting lost. Radioing now. Oh. Magic now. Hello! Finally reunited after three days apart. <laughs> I can't believe it. The women find themselves on the northern tip of the island. They have no water source and many haven't had a drop to drink for two days. Yo, dudes. Hi. <gasps> it's sunny. The sun is blaring so hot. There is no outside input, and it is up to us to survive and thrive. That is a heck of a challenge. Oh, my gosh. Despite the oppressive 30-degree heat, there's something to celebrate for one of the party. If you'd have asked me a year ago where I would be spending my 25th birthday, I definitely would not have been saying, oh, my 25th birthday will be spent abandoned on an island, dehydrated and, and starving. For 
the last five days, the women have barely eaten and had hardly anything to drink. Finding water is a priority. I just want a drink. I just want a drink. The only reason we're not thinking about food is because yeah. we're so thirsty. Our body basically tries and, like, compensates for everything that we're lacking. When it comes to survival, I often talk about the rule of three, which means you can survive three minutes without air, three days without water, three weeks without food. And in temperatures like this, the women have got to drink a lot, between two and four litres of water a day. If they don't, they're finished. That is a clear blue sky. The sun obviously makes you feel more dehydrated and more weak. Without a sustainable water source, they are surviving on rainwater. But there hasn't been a drop for 48 hours. Looking at the sea, you just want to drink the seawater. Keep dreaming about diet iron brew. <laughs> cold, freezing cold diet iron brew with ice. Oh my god, my other birthdays, and I'm stressing out because no one's got me a card or no one's come out for a meal, and now I'm just going to be happy with some a piece of fruit and some water. <laughs> <laughs> I think a bogey just came out of my nose. <laughs> eat it, eat it, eat it! <laughs> Waste nothing! <laughs> I've always loved adventure. In December 2013, I set off on transatlantic rowing race, 3,000 miles across to Antigua. 30th of January and we have just had a capsize. I have split my head open. I didn't want to give up. It had been 96 days of pushing my body and pushing my mind further than I ever had before, but we still had to give up. So that's hard to come to terms with. I will not get off the island. I have to prove to myself that I can do it. Happy birthday, Lauren, superwoman. <laughs> She's keeping us all it's sane. Not. She's keeping us all sane. Celebrations are short-lived. The women have a life or death priority. Seeing the effect that dehydration has, I couldn't really have predicted that it could be so disabling. We ain't coming back until we found water. Georgie leads a group on a scouting mission into the thick jungle. There are no pools, which is what we're after. I've made sure that the island's got enough water, indigenous animals and vegetation on it to keep them alive, but only if they've got the ingenuity to find it, catch it and kill it. That's quite a deep pool, it's empty. It's just the same shit. If we don't find water, we're screwed. What is that? Oh, my God, there's two piglets! Oh, my God! Oh, my God. Be careful, cos it's Mum's name. I can actually see Mum over here. Oh, oh, careful, yeah. come, come, away, come away. If Mum thinks the kids are threatened, that's when they get really aggressive. She's lying down. Come away, sweetheart. She's massive. She's enormous. She's, like, really near. The piglets. The first thing I thought of was crackling, to be honest. I am hungry. I don't think I could look into his little piggy eyes and then kill him. I'm not ready for that yet. But then again, by the time I come home, I'll probably be a full-blown fucking, I don't know, cannibal. The pigs are given a reprieve. Right now, everyone's lives depend on finding water. What are we going to do? We're all buggered. No energy to move. Brian? Is it right? Are you OK? What's wrong? Whenever I stand up, I just see all black. It's so black feeling. That's dehydration, babe. The situation is now critical. We're going foraging. Water. <sighs> In a do-or-die attempt to find water... Please be careful. Georgie and Fee strike out in the midday sun. 
I just think I just couldn't sit and wilt in that sun down there. The weather here is brutal. You know, you've got 90% plus humidity. The heat here is oppressive. So finding that fresh water source is vital. The bottom line is you go three days without it, you're dead. So hot today. So, so hot. Microwave. I think we should look on here and then go back. Oh, it's water. Ah, this looks good. Jesus Christ, we did it. Oh, yeah, baby. I don't give a fuck where that came from. Do you? We're drinking it. Oh! Amazing. So, we hit the jackpot. Pick this out. OK, it's not over yet. Huh? You know what? If I die, I don't care. At least I don't die thirsty. Obviously, rain itself is drinkable without purification. But once it hits the ground, it becomes contaminated. All sorts of bacteria and nasties there. And no matter how clean the water looks, you've got to boil it. Guess what I've got? Water! Oh, yeah! oh I'm not going to lie to you. You drink it at your own risk. It came from a waterfall, and it tastes fine. Don't drink it. Every water from waterfall, river, whatever, has to be filtered and boiled. Because of the parasites, it's just, it's, it's a death trap. Com complete. The whole island is a death trap. The thing is, then, we need to get this fire started, because if we don't get this fire started, we're back to zero again. We're back to no fucking water. They haven't been able to start a fire for three days. If they're to survive, this is their last chance. I won't stop until the fire is ready, because then I know that we can drink. Yeah. Just go through that smoke, pretend it's not even smoking. So I think we've got it, I think we've got it. Okay, stop, stop. Okay, that's that's it. Again, and again, yeah. it's got enough... Yeah, it's yeah. Well done! Guys, we've got a fire! We just taste the water. Ah, look, 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 look. Look at that fire. The water won't be safe to drink until it is boiled some three hours later. Meanwhile, Lauren's keeping the fire going. The fire is so hot, yeah. it's burning through everything. The birthday girl yeah. is doing all the hard work and she's exhausted. I'd say that Lauren and Beth... Lauren and Beth are had... always first in there to help. Also, they think of things. Ah! Oh, shit! Lauren, Lauren, come this way, this way, this way! Go into the sea now! Ah! Fucking hell! Shit. She opened the lid and it just exploded in her face. Oh, fuck. Right in there, babe. Get her right immersed in the sea. Jesus. Oh, fuck. Day seven on the island, and Lauren's been tending a jerry can of boiling water on the fire. She opened the lid and it just exploded in our face. Jesus! What's happened? What's happened? The pressure of the jerry can exploded. How are you feeling? Fine. OK. Stay there for now, keeping the water. For the moment, Dr Belinda can't tell how badly scalded Lauren is. What you say is to run whatever it is under cold water for... Stop. Exactly. We'll see the extent of it in a minute. Just everything seems to be yeah, going a bit... It's just everything. So just meet them at the same time. She says Lauren's, like, one of our strongest yeah. people. So if, if she goes down, I think it'd be a big detriment to us. It's like doing your water on your engine. You've got to let it cool down before you open the top. Top uh, screw top. 
If her burns prove to be severe, Lauren may have to be evacuated. Poor Lauren, she's not having the best birthday ever, is she? Dehydrated and now scalded by boiling water. I'm just going to keep dampening you and letting it cool. Hopefully she will uh, be back to full strength soon. Lauren's face isn't scalded, and Dr Belinda believes she can treat the burns on her arm. Especially in the blistered area. That's the worst bit. It feels like someone is singeing my arm with a hot poker. I will not let people see that I'm feeling just as weak as them because I actually feel like some people need strength and other people to keep them going, and I'm determined to be that person. Still alive! <laughs> I'm still standing. Despite the jerry can exploding, just enough water remains for everyone to have a life-saving drink. Pick your own bottle, lost it all the same. Um, you just used it. No, one. I asked for whiskey and coke. <laughs> oh, I've went for some aloe vera original drink, and aloe vera is disgusting. I tried it with a detox, and it's, it tastes like sperm. Now they have a water source, food should be the women's big priority. Biggie, biggie, biggies. Hello. All they've eaten in a week are a few handfuls of yucca and coconut. <laughs> We've got two of the cutest little piglets here. Their little tails wag like dogs are so cute. <laughs> Everything that moves on that island really should be seen as a potential source of food, and that includes the pigs. Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> to befriend them is just going to make the decision to kill them a thousand times more difficult. And really, in survival, there's no room for sentiment. Sorry, I'm just being joined here. I can hear you squeaking. What are you squeaking about? And everyone's like, oh, they're so cute, they're so cute. Like, we're going to eat them as pets. And I'm like, I'm just thinking, you know, fuck that girl's like. We're literally going to slice and dice those piggies. Definitely, we're eating them. Suckling pig. Nah. Would you not eat them? No, they're I so cute. Would. I don't care that they're cute. As the time goes on, we'll be hungrier and hungrier, but I am not killing the little piglets and eating them. No way. They're so funny. I've been a vegetarian basically since I was born. I think it's going to be a massive challenge if I have to, by choice, eat meat. But then again, maybe it's not going to be a choice because I'll be so starving and I'll just have to eat it. <laughs> I would definitely say I'm an animal person rather than a people's person. You know, animals are less stressful sometimes. I will train them pigs. I'll kick them up the arse. <laughs> the moral argument is, is do we now eat the pigs? <coughs> but then do you kill, essentially, your pet? Biggie, biggie, biggies. Sagey, onion. <laughs> With water running low... Careful, these rocks are uber fucking slippy. An expedition party makes the hazardous journey back to the waterfall. That's it, guys. We're nearly there. Jamie, hang on. Oh! Shit. I saved the camera! Good job. <laughs> That's it there. Shit, doesn't look like it's running. Fuck's sake. No! I don't understand. This was pouring with water the other day. And it's dry. Totally. The water source may be dry, but fortunately in the tropics, the weather can change in an instant. Look at that. Dirty grey cloud is that. Oh, here it comes! Let's get warm. 
water. Quick before this happens. Can you pass me the bottle one by one and pass them over to me? Violent Pacific storms can dump an inch of water in an hour. The women need to take their chances when they can. Whoa, 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 whoa! We need time to take the fire! The wood's getting saturated. They're using Georgie's poncho to save the fire, but half the group is tied up trying to collect rainwater. I fucking believe this. How can this organise can they be? Oh, no, Piggy! Hey! Oh, Ow. they're getting shelter. Oh, it's cooking itself, really. Want to roast themselves? Let them roast themselves. Is that a tornado? Oh, what is it? Wow. You want to see what's out there, girls? It's like a big thing in the sky. No. Honestly, I've never seen anything like it. If that touches down, we're in trouble. Oh, my God. At their worst, water tornadoes are capable of travelling up to 150 miles an hour. If this hits the island, it could destroy everything in its path. It's like one of those. It's growing as well. It is growing. Well, that's pretty scary. Um, we're really vulnerable here and no-one can get to anything like that happens. So. Oh, hang on. Is it dissipating or is it just curving? It's gone. It seems to just split up and gone. We get to live another day. Shame. While they've kept the fire alight, they've hardly collected any water. Is that the total amount of what we've just got from yeah. that rainfall? I am struggling. But as much as we nest here, Mother Nature turns up and she just shits on it. And it's like a fucking mudslide everywhere now. It's become clear to the women they can't survive here on Coconut Beach. They must move camp. Whoa! Five days ago, the women discovered a beach on the western side of the island with a sustainable water source nearby. They christened it Home Beach. Now Lauren wants to take everyone back there. You need to get to that Home Beach now. The beach, the water... It's just going to make people feel like they can actually do this. I'm pretty confident in, the, in where that beach is. We do have a serious problem with water. Hopefully Home Beach is going to sort all that out. There's yeah. a stream there. Yeah, and it's just the, like, resources. We can start making our shelters. Yeah. You guys haven't seen it yet either, have yeah. you? So I've got this image of Good. this beach that flows for, like, miles. Palm trees, hammocks, uh, shelter, waterfall. Fish yeah. jumping from the sea. In the yeah, we saw that. Ocean. We can see that. Oh, it's so excited. What's the plan with the fire guys? We're going to try say, and transport it. We haven't got anything metal, have we yet? So we'll just have to light another one. So right, we're experts now. I'm excited. It's, it's going to be eight. Who would I'm like sure the first that. snail? Okay. Oh! Yeah! Sage and onion remain off the menu. Tonight it's just foraged snails. It tastes quite salty, quite meaty, and then there's this sharp, like shit, basically. Uh -huh. And a good meal always prompts a lively conversation. Is that it? Yeah. That's it. It's small. <laughs> I had the South African with the tiny little penis. It was definitely a micro penis because it, it like, was smaller than my pinky. Like, like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it was smaller than my pinky. Like, seriously, bear? It's not even funny. <laughs> I really feel, feel for them because no girl could feel that inside them. <laughs> no. Can you imagine? No matter how tight you so are. So what's the point? One guy who I was dating it just felt like a little twiggler. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the good thing is that they're often really good at cunnilingus. <laughs> and then you have to get special condoms because they're so small and it's just going to slip off otherwise. So, Do you actually get special condoms for them? You can, yeah. <laughs> 6 30 a.m., day nine. Honestly, adorable. I'm seeing this about a pig. <laughs> you get oh, and they're pig. very cute. It's just made me happy. Today, the women face an arduous trek, seeking the beach where they want to build a permanent camp. What do you think, Jamie? What? So we're cracking these open to get a mouthful of coconut before we set off. No, no, it's too heavy. There's loads there. 
Oh, I really want a coconut. I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry, but someone's just said now. I want you to just take your backpack off and I'm going to give it to Jamie. It's a hard walk and you will find it difficult. With very little water for the trek, Abby and Belinda are especially concerned about PhD student Fran. I know she's not well. She doesn't want it's to really tricky, She doesn't want to make a fuss and she doesn't, and she doesn't want to, want to, want to leave this. the island. Five days ago, she collapsed and received emergency medical treatment. I'm really worried about Fran. Every time she tries to do something, she's feeling lightheaded and dizzy. She's already passed out once due to low blood sugar, so clearly her body's not very good at adapting to this. Shall we uh, make you the bow carrier? This is actually the most important thing yes. ever. Yes. I feel like the weakest person in the group, because everyone, even though they're really tired, they can keep going. As I've said before, I just feel like another mouth to feed. Harvela is reluctant to leave Sage and Onion behind. Oh, oh no, he's tangled oh, on him. Well, OK, Jesus. we'll just grab him. The wild animals, they just need to be left alone. I wanted to try. We can't take the pigs. Guys, we're going to home beach. Woo! Bye, Sage. Bye, Onion. Bye, dinner. Bye, lunch. <laughs> We look like survivors. Nine a.m. The women depart for home beach. The last time they went into the jungle, they were lost for three days. We're going down, Lauren. This time, twenty-five-year-old nurse Lauren leads the way. I think we're just going to like head on this bridge thing. Julie, how are you feeling? Fuck off. Fuck off. Yeah, that's how I'm feeling. Whee! After just half an hour, Becky's in trouble. Hold up, guys. She's got a dry mouth. My water bottle allocation for the day is almost done. How's everyone doing? Energy levels zero. The move will eat into the women's fragile energy reserves, but it's a gamble they must take, whatever the consequences. Take five. Hey. Oh, so shit. If this rain keeps on going, I feel like I'm on the brink of collapsing again. I just, I don't want to tell anyone because I feel so pathetic. I know I can do this. I just, I just need to keep going. With the group exhausted, Lauren and Fee volunteer to scout ahead. Anyone want a biscuit? Yes, oh my oh. god. The advance party are pushing ahead through the jungle. I think we may have found it. We have! This is it! I know. This is our beach! <laughs> oh my god. So excited. I feel a surge of energy. I can hear the sea. Oh, wow! That is amazing! <laughs> Even in the piss so drain, this place looks ridiculous. I just think paradise compared to where we've been. The sea looks bluer, everything looks better. Everything. Our pigs! The pigs! They've traipsed all that way after us. I don't know whether I could eat them now. Aww. Glad they came. They love us. What the hell? Ketchup. <laughs> um, a ketchup bottle, and I just think that's a sign. Open ketchup. journey has beaten Fran. This beach is extra cold because it's kind of like open. I don't think, feel like I can do anything in this weather because I can't move. It's a little bit damp. Oh, thank you so much, Abby. Oh, I love you. 
coming through the jungle again today in pouring rain has tipped her over the edge. She's been proper poorly. She's cold all the time. And so when we're cold, it's for her, it's like bloody hypothermia. When you're wet, you're malnourished, your body temperature just is going to drop. And it only takes a two degree drop to take you right bang into that danger zone for hypothermia. So the women have an uphill struggle getting Fran warm. I am on firewood duty. We need to get dry firewood. Nothing is dry. There's just no dry standing wood. Um, it's not a little bit wet, honestly. The place is just sodden with water. I don't feel that I could cope with another rainstorm. I don't think I'm medically fit for this. It really is torture for Fran. She clearly is not a well person. I don't even have any sort of rescue meds, so if she were to collapse, it would take a while to get any further medical help to us. Stop, stop, brother. This is uh, brother Wonga Hillover. Fran now feels she has no option. My body can't take it anymore, over. Do you then want to take off the island? Yes, please, over. I hope you feel so much better, honey. Mm, I think I, I think you might have died if you stayed. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm serious. Oh, no, thank you. I all think I would as well. <laughs> I am absolutely gutted. I absolutely love Fran. She's ace. She's our little baby. Oh. It was going to be my first challenge ever that I for myself did. I'm really gutted that I couldn't complete it. It's kind of heartbreaking. I tried so hard. Fran, bye, my darling. We love you. We love you. Another one down. Now we need to go and anchor the others to trees and make sure none of the others are thinking of leaving. To lose another team member is so demoralising, and you can just feel the atmosphere in camp at the minute is just on tenterhooks, and everyone's thinking, I don't know how long I can keep going like this. Shit! What the hell's gone on? The storm and an extreme high tide have washed up a potential treasure trove. Like Paradise Beach, no longer. <gasps> oh, false alarm, half a hair clip. Ta -da. Not only is it a can, it's a can with a lid. I think one of the real unsung heroes in the Survivor's Arsenal is resourcefulness. What's that? Is that Iron Brew? Oh, my God! Oh my god. I thought it was Iron Brew. Oh my god. Here, here, hold that, hold that. I god. thought it was Iron Brew. Oh my god. Wait, check the sell by date. I don't care. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. It was so powerfully sweet, so sugary, like syrup. And it was just heaven, absolute heaven. <laughs> literally just a drop of my tongue, and it, it felt like ecstasy, absolute ecstasy. The women hope the wood is now dry enough to somehow light a fire to purify the water from a nearby pond. This is filled up good. Yeah, Thank God for that. Thank God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God! Did you see it? Wait, hold on, we haven't it's hit a fire yet. This is, this is, like, so it's... early. Please don't go out, please don't go out. It's too fucking wet. Shit, what are we going to do? Good work, Georgie. Nothing happens without fire. It's... 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 Inverted triangle. Fire. Everything comes off of the fire, that's it. Without fire, we are. I don't have any survival skills, but I'm absolutely happy to step up to the plate if a crocodile needs killing or a snake needs its head chopping off. And I think the key to our survival on the island is teamwork. I was actually caught in the tsunami in Sri Lanka. 
we didn't eat or sleep for four days. So I have an understanding of what that mental pressure is. Am I just not putting enough pressure on it? I think I'm not putting enough pressure on it. Hard as she tries, Georgie can't get it to light. Even now, the wood is drier. What's up, Jules? It's half past two now. No sign of a fire. There's hardly any spindle left, is there? I know, that's the thing. That's probably why it's flicking off. Just give it another go. Nice and slow. That's it. Keep it like that. The battle for an ember continues through the night. We're all getting a little bit panicked. We're starving and thirsty. Like, surely I'm going to die soon. Fucking stupid place. The women have now been without water for more than 48 hours, and they are dangerously dehydrated. I feel really drained and really faint. Okay, to you, Lauren. Me? Yeah, me. Oh, fuck off! It wasn't like that time, I'm <laughs> sure. I think we've lost this one, haven't we? So this bow drill set, really all the parts need to be in perfect proportion for this to work. The problem is the women's drill is now too small because it's been so used. They need to start again. Their situation is now beyond critical. Oh, fuck. I feel so dizzy. It's fucking hard work when you've not drunk anything and the heat. I'm really struggling. It feels like my purpose on this island is just to be dehydrated. <laughs> I'm so dizzy. <laughs> I've got shots of Bravo 1 over. I just wanted to let you know we need some supplies from you. Medical advice is that the castaways are now so critically dehydrated that within a few hours, their lives will genuinely be in danger. So really, I've got no choice but to intervene. And the women will be given a working bow drill set. Right, fire startings, bitters. Let's do this. Purring, ladies, it's purring at you. start thinking about the bigger things like our bellies for example there's a little something down there which is sitting a bit dangerously close to the fire to me this is amazing <gasps> it's it's cool and clear and that view i feel like we're in a luxury hotel and then shortly our butler will come what have you ordered for butler service Ooh, oysters oh no not oysters we can get them here oh yeah Please, order something you can't oh. get here. What would be your first? A double cheeseburger. Absolute whopper with everything on it. I want to find out what you... Now, what have you ordered from our butler? From our room service, I've started with some... Deep... Well, sorry, it is seafood, actually. No, really? Some deep fried calamari. Uh, and then, for some weird reason, it's a bit like being pregnant, I want jelly and custard and ice cream. And I don't even like ice cream. But I would, I'd like, you know, jelly, custard and ice cream. And then a kid's buffet. Oh, kid's buffet, I'm with you with that. Until I vomit. Day 12 on the island. The women now have fire and plenty of drinking water, but they're barely surviving on just 50 calories a day. It's took me, I don't know how many hours to get that many almonds. It's gonna be one almond, if we're lucky. After almost two weeks without a meal, 
the group is at the point of starvation. If they don't eat soon, there's a genuine risk their organs will start to shut down. I'm fucking hungry. Um, my tummy has gone away. I literally have no tummy, look. It's flat, 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 flat. My stomach's going, I'm gonna have to eat myself. Is that not the cutest thing you've ever seen? Hi, sage and onion. <laughs> the fate of sage and onion hangs in the balance. The women have befriended them and now can't agree whether or not to eat them. I keep looking at these gorgeous pigs as bits of food. They're too cute. We can't, I can't. Now, imagine this. Barbecue sauce over the ribs, right? Barbecue sauce, barbecue sauce, barbecue sauce, right? Even the tail, really yeah. good, really chewy. I'd still eat it. I think we should spit roast in. Put steak up through its bum, not through its mouth, it's really through its dead, of Obviously, I've got a completely different point of view to the rest of the girls because I don't eat meat, but... Sage and onion, the little piglets, I'm definitely not eating them. We've got two pigs, sage and onion, which have become our pet pigs. They followed us all the way from Coconut Beach here, uh, which is a long walk for little legs. They were thriving at the other beach. What's lacking here that they could get at the other beach? They were digging up lots of roots at the other beach. It was really muddy, so the water collected in the mud, whereas in the sand, water doesn't really collect. We have to set a limit to how much we do that compromises our resources over the pigs. Over the past few days, people have been laid down with double vision, retching and not being able to walk. Yeah. People are really suffering, and you need to eat to survive. Nobody wants to kill anything, but we need to eat. Understandably, you know, a lot of people find the whole concept of killing animals, it's either cruel, it's upsetting, and yes, it's never pleasant to take a life, but in a survival situation, when it comes down to the wire, it's a simple choice, them or you. You're really upset, everybody's really upset. Can we show of hands that we agree that we do something soon? So, Jamie, wh where's your mind thinking at the moment? I don't want anything to do with this. Well, who's going to kill it? Well, that's the next question. I I'd help. have volunteered myself to do it. Awesome. Just because I know that I'll do it fast. I'm going to drink about it. It's crying out more than we're taking it. Oh, sorry. You see, it was wrong to all get attached to them, wasn't it? I always say, once you've named something, you're screwed. <laughs> yeah. The reason I'm so upset is because they reminded me of my dog. And... I really thought we were going to have some until we left the island. It makes everything real. It makes everything, like, raw. It's pretty raw, isn't it? Yes! It's raw. Um, I just want to make it the most, like, peaceful death. You know, like, if I was panicking, then it would feel that. If anyone seems a good whacker. I'm not annoyed at anybody. I just don't want to have any part of it. As long as I don't see it or hear it, it's just upsetting. Just gently holding out because I don't want him to struggle. I want him to be relaxed. But I tell you what, they've had a little better life than most pigs in captivity that are bred for pork. Pork we eat and the chops I buy and the sausages I buy. They've had no life at all. I don't know another pig that's gone to bed with a load of people. <laughs> Ready? Should race. Absolutely. Yeah. One, oh, two, three. <laughs> well, Lauren, absolutely amazingly well done. <laughs> He did the job really, really well, really well. It was quick, quick, and it was painless. That was pretty emotional, wasn't it? It was really horrible. 
It's never easy to take a life, but having learned from this first kill, they actually dispatched the second animal swiftly, cleanly, no hesitation. Yeah, I'm glad it wasn't, it wasn't distress. Should we get it back and get it on the barbecue? I've never, ever killed an animal before, especially as a, as a girl as well, is that I don't think we're designed to want to kill anything, and that's what has been a huge learning curve for me. You know, it's reality. That's what it is, it's brutal reality that if you want to eat, then you are going to have to kill something. Gosh, Lauren, she was the first to volunteer for the pig. She's very matter-of-fact, very hard-working. Actually, if I could channel a little bit of Lauren, I'd be very happy, because she's very impressive. We needed something that was going to kick starters into not viewing animals as pets, but rather as a way that is going to allow us to survive. You know, it's going to give us the energy that we need to get hunting, get finding water, to find wood, because that is all exhausting work. It's very sad, though, if I'm perfectly, perfectly honest. I'm really looking forward to the meat because I think we're all in dying need of a bit of a meal. Harvey, yeah. just to let you know, the pig's on the fire. I'm not being a hypocrite. I'll look later. I'm just not ready. Thank you. There's no way I'm going in there until it's all done with. I wouldn't go in there. I'm not eating a pig. This is a really decisive moment to the women's struggle for survival. Now they have the mindset to progress as hunters and killers. They've actually crossed a very important psychological line, and for the first time, they're behaving like survivors. Are you ready, guys? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This tastes good. Oh, my God. It's unbelievably delicious. I don't like the fact that I'm eating the piggy, but it is good. Mm -hmm. I don't know about anyone else, but I feel like a wild animal. <laughs> like, sort like a cave woman. Do you think that tube is? It's testicle. I quite like things like that. Do you know what I mean? It's quite savage. We needed that. I'm not going to lie. It was gorgeous. Um, I could have ate it all myself. It's uh, it's all good. That's it for now. Over and out. Next time on the island. You lazy bunch of bone idle bastards! We're not even halfway through, and tensions are beginning to fray. We're not all just grunts and bash on bits of wood. The sun would look like you didn't want to do a harder job. I would say fuck you to that person. Fucking calm down, eh? There is absolutely no food in this camp. This island is infested. Keep on! Round you, boys! Yeah!